happy thursday to you people what is going on we are in the building we're keeping it moving pro fan talk is back happy thursday to you glad you could join me we got a lot of stuff going on the nfl is the gift that keeps on giving messing around just having a nice day minding my own business and then you look up and story after story uh everybody's getting signed bryce harper's hitting home runs and grand slams jojo uh, Joel Embiid comes back from injury and leads the Sixers to a victory. Just when you thought it was safe, Tortorella's on the microphone. Everybody's getting in on the deal. Everybody's getting in on the deal. I'll tell you what, we uh, that show on Netflix, Three Body Problem. We got a three body problem because we got the Eagles, the Sixers, and the Phillies all in full tilt. I won't say that the Flyers are, are, are there quite yet, but I like what Torts is doing. Um, and they'll be there shortly. So uh, we are in a good situation, man. Everything is vibing. Everything is moving. Uh, people getting agitated early when it comes to the Phillies. Man, there's just so much stuff going on. It's, it's not even funny, man. But I love it. I love this time of year. It's like everybody's active. Even when the Eagles are not active, they're active. Howie Roseman is still in the forefront of the news and still making deals. What's going on, Cody K? First out the limo. I appreciate you. Um. So, yeah, man, it, it's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Got some special guests coming in tonight. Uh, Barrett Brooks is supposed to join me somewhere around 7.30, 7.45, so I'm expecting him to be in there um, so we can chop it up a little bit. I haven't talked to him in, the, in a minute. So lots of stuff going on, lots of stuff going on, man. I appreciate everybody coming in the chat. appreciate all the people in the Twitterverse. Trying to keep it pushing, trying to make it happen, man. We got the the final four starts tomorrow. I can't wait for that. Um, you guys know I've been I've been rocking the the women's final four for a good little while, man. A good little while. What's up, Cody? Um, I've been I've been watching women's basketball this year uh, more than anybody else. Michael Bird, what's going on, man? Left side in, locked up. Mike, I appreciate you, bro. I'm not sure what that means, though. <laughs> what up, Jason Sink? What's going on, homie? Um, big fan of the Eagles 2024 season better. Eagles new edge linebacker draft, Georgia, and Alabama, and Texas. Okay, okay. Possibly, possibly. What's up, 88s? What's up, 88? I like 88s, man, because that's the, that's the year I graduated. And we won the state title, so we'd always be like 88. Hey, it's going state. So uh, so what's good, fam? Just a lot of stuff, man. I was just talking about the um uh getting ready for the final four tomorrow, man. I still uh I got a bracket. I got a bracket I did on ESPN.com for the women's final four, and I'm at 97%, son. 97%. I'm killing it right now. And I got um, South Carolina winning the title. I think uh, I think Gino, Gino Ariema is going to have something for Iowa. And I think Paige Beckers and UConn are going to beat Iowa. That's my prediction. That's going to be the upset because Paige Beckers is no damn joke. And she is – she doesn't have the long-range shot like Caitlin Clark does, but I – I would argue that Beckers is a little bit quicker than Caitlin Clark. She's a good shooter. She just doesn't shoot long range like that. Um, and I think that uh, – I think Gino R.E.M. is going to – he watched that LSU game. If you watch the LSU-Iowa game, the, the in my opinion, the fatal flaw that Kim Mulkey did was she didn't put Flaugé Johnson on Caitlin Clark to start the game or at least to start the second half. That would have made a difference because Flaugé Johnson is – fast and quick and she can hang with her she's got a little bit more length than Haley van Litt. Haley van Litt is quick but she gives up the size and kept they kept rolling rolling off that screen and she couldn't recover and kim Mulkey just wouldn't wouldn't switch things up so you know it is what it is michael uh the gamecocks are indeed the real thing 
Uh, my prediction is Dawn Staley is going to go undefeated for this year and win the national championship. That girl is the bomb. Dawn Staley just steps up. My only re- worry about South Carolina is if you look their last couple of games, they were winning big at halftime and they let them come back in the, the, the third and the fourth quarter. They ended up getting the dubs, but it's like when you got somebody down by 22 points at halftime, you need to put your foot on their neck and just destroy them. And for some reason, Duke did the same thing. Duke could never put together a good first half. They would always come back in the second half. And then finally, uh, they could. They were good until they, until they weren't. So uh, it, it's it's one of those things, man. And and But I have seen um, when South Carolina played North Carolina, man, they put it on them. That was the most dominant performance I had seen in the uh, tournament. South Carolina over North Carolina. So they can do it, but they got to do it uh, on both sides of the ball. And they got to stop that young lady named Isaiah James because she is no joke. That girl is the truth. Now, NC State does not have the overall speed and height that South Carolina has. They do not. But that girl, Isaiah James, is something special. And she can burn you, and they better have somebody. Normally, Full Wiley doesn't start. You know, Malaysia Full Wiley is the last freshman phenom uh, still playing. Juju Watkins got bounced. Um, Who else? Who was the other? Who was the other freshman? There's another freshman, Juju Watkins, uh, Malaysia Full Wiley, um oh the girl from um uh the girl from Iowa State Crooks the big 6363 six, center from Iowa State she was killing them she's a freshman but um yeah full Wiley is the is the last freshman um that's still playing so and she is the truth for Wiley is the truth I thought we was going to see for Wiley against Juju Watkins but Juju Watkins got bounced by Gino R.A.M. Gino R.A.M. is going to have a game plan for Iowa. So we'll see what happens. Um, so that should be fun. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'll have another video out probably tonight or tomorrow morning about the Final Four. So that's going to be a good one, man. So we'll see our national championship this weekend, man. So that should be cool. So South Carolina, it gets my vote. But but I tell you what, man. Um Got to give props to uh, real quick. I'm trying to delay a little bit of the Eagles talk. I'm going to get into it. But um, Barrett is scheduled to be on at like anywhere between 730 and 745. So I want to save most of the of the Eagles talk for when he gets on. But, um, but dude, what I saw, the, the double dip the other night, right? Notifications start blowing up. Bryce Harper done hit a home run. Notifications blow up again. Bryce Harper hit a second home run. Notifications are off the chain. Bryce Harper hits a grand slam. So he had three home runs, two solos, and a grand slam in one game. Already. Dude is just is heating up. But, but you got to pump your brakes a little bit. Because before that game, Everybody was already complaining about the Phillies. They don't look good. They had a bad bullpen performance the other day. And it's like, pump your brakes, man. Chill. Like, y'all got to chill. It's not even, can we at least get to 25 games of a 162-game season? Can we at least do that first before y'all jump off the handle? Ready to trade people. And I, I heard on the radio today, dude was like, yeah, let's 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 get these guys out of here. Uh, Castellanos and somebody else and i was like what are y'all talking about man the season has not even started it's not even consistently warm outside yet and and philadelphia is already complaining about the the bullpen it's like let these dudes get warmed up get in your rhythm let's get to 25 30 games you know i'm not gonna say anything until we at least 25 games into the season at least 25 games give them that much yeah, but uh, James, you 100% right, man. But also, look at what happened last year when they started out slow 
and everybody was was it was all doom and gloom in the apocalypse last year. And it's just like I'm, I said the same thing last year that I'm saying right now. Everybody pump your brakes because it's way too early. And you know what? They got better, and folks still complain. They got better, and the bullpen still sucked. They got better. They started hitting more, and then they got they ended up, you know, doing what they did, going to the World Series. We couldn't finish the deal, no, but at least we got there. And, you know, we get busted up by Atlanta, but what happens? You're talking about the finish. Look what happened to it. Look at what we did to Atlanta when we had to last year. So it's a new year. Got to give them time. Got to let them work some of the kinks out. They're going to figure it out. They always do. So, yeah, the bullpen is tough. <laughs> Say nothing you can do about that. But it's been like that for the last couple of years. So uh, what's new? But you got to understand that they're trying to work on it, man. They're trying to get it together. They are trying to get it together. So give them a little slack. Give them a little time. Let them get warmed up. Let them get in, in my opinion, especially when you're talking about baseball. You got to le at least let them get to 10 games so they can, you know, get the rhythm, get the get the juices flowing. You're not, you know, all the new guys, are they used to new location, playing for a new team? Are some of the rooks, are they, or, or the new players to the city, are they comfortable in their surroundings? You know, do they know how to navigate South Street and Broad Street effectively? Like all of that type of stuff matters. I'm telling you. Been there, done that. My rookie year, I remember living down on Delaware Ave. My apartment was right on Delaware Ave. It'd have been a hell of a lot cheaper if I'd have went over the bridge and went into, you know, Mount Laurel or Voorhees or somewhere a lot of guys were living. But my thing is, I wanted to be somewhere close to the stadium because for me that was comfortable. I was right around the corner. I could get to the stadium in less than ten minutes. That's what I wanted to do. So. Being comfortable in your surroundings for a lot of the new guys and the people coming back, you got to give them time to just get into their rhythm and just get, you know, that muscle memory back and all of that kind of stuff, man. It, all, it is what it is. So just pump your brakes on the on the Phillies hate for a little bit. All right. Let them get started. And if it's, you know, if it's still if they five and 20 when they when 25 games, hit, then you got to write the, the talk stuff. You know, but let them, you know, leave them alone for a little bit, man. Let them, let them get used to the new season. You know, damn, they ain't even had a chance to watch the uniforms yet. They're <laughs> already complaining, man. So, but, like I said, my notifications were going off. Bryce Harper hits three home runs, grand slam. Then it's like, bam. Uh, Per Adrian Warshawski, uh, whatever his name is. I got the notification on the NBA site or on Twitter. Joel and B looks like he might play tonight. It's like, what? Where did, where did this come from? What? He's on the court. He's going to warm up. Okay, he's not going to warm up. Like, no, he's going to play. Okay, wait a minute. So I call my grandson and I'm like, Chris, did you hear about Joel and B? Oh, I'm going to the game. He's like, wait a minute. So he went down to the game, Wojciechowski. That's his name. I couldn't even say it. Woj. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Whoa, just we're gonna keep it. Um, so my grandson went down to the game, and lo and behold, JoJo's comeback off the injury was that night, and he put on a show. He was dog tired, <laughs> but he put on a show. He was on the free throw line with his hands on his knees, sucking air. He was just out of shape. And I remember uh, I got into uh, a conversation and um, talking about uh, like what it means to be in game shape. And this goes across. It don't matter what sport you in, right? Baseball, basketball, football, hockey, soccer, lacrosse, uh, you name it, cross country, track and field whatever you name it it is vastly different when it's time to be in game shape because i i am almost certain that in his in his um rehab 
he was on the bike, he was on the climbing machine, and he was he was doing his cardio. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I don't think that was probably an issue. He was getting it in. However, you're not, you don't move like you normally move. You it's, it's just different when you got to go in game shape. And I, I, I said, if you really, like if you were playing football, if you wanted to be in game shape, I would say when you go to the gym to work out, get your workout in, and before you go home, do about 30 up-downs or suicides. Or if they got a, set, a small set of steps, roll yourself down the steps and bump, you know, and throw yourself over the floor, you know, on the floor a little bit. And then do that about eight to ten times after your workout. And that's how and, and see how your body feels. I would imagine uh if you do any type of boxing training where with a real trainer that's that's hitting you and tagging you with a body bag or or something like that, you would get a good feel for something like that because your your body has to take those hits. And and you have to you have to be able to to get it together. When he got that steal late in the in the fourth quarter, and he had to take off down the down the court for a fast break, he was out of gas. You could tell like he was trying to move, but his legs just wasn't letting him. His legs was just not moving fast enough. Trey nine seven nine, what's going on, my guy? I appreciate you, brother. Uh, James, that is the question uh, of the month right now. Will JoJo be enough? Will he be enough? I don't know. That is the question. Because in, even with the way he played early, and even, you know, we know, and I still say this. I said this the other day. I still say this. If you go back and look at the tape, when that dude jumped on that ball and jumped on his knee, in my opinion, that was purposeful. He did that on purpose. And I'm surprised that the Sixers didn't raise his think about that because that looked like that was on purpose because he jumped right on his leg and the way his leg was positioned, it kind of hyperextended a little bit. And I was like, nah, man, I might have had to stand up swinging or something like that. That just looked, that looked like a dirty play in my book. But he got back on the court. Uh, he was dog tired, but he made it work. He played 30 minutes, never in – a million years what I thought he would on his comeback game, he would play 30 minutes. I I didn't see that coming at all. So props to him, man. Props to him. So he he was um he was spectacular, man. I, I was I was so impressed um with how he came back and what he did and how he performed, even when he's tired, because I saw it was like, you know, I'm a I'm a football guy, but I'm also a coach, and I know how to coach kids, regardless of what the sport is. So I used to coach basketball. Now, I don't know basketball. I don't know basketball like I know football. Like basketball, I can't tell you defenses and offensive schemes and all. I can probably explain a pick and roll, and that's about as far as I can go. Now, if you want to get on the – Football side, I could, you know, explain what a running back's supposed to do and Roger and Louie calls and going up against a 3-4 and a 4-3 defense and what happens if the linebackers drop back. Well, are they going to follow you in, in zone or are they going to shift over uh, because they in man-to-man? Like different things like that. I can get into the nuts and bolts of football. Basketball, not so much. And I'm saying that to say when I used to coach kids, you keep it basic. And I used to tell my kids, can you make the free throws when you're tired? And you used to, at the end of practice, you would make them run sprints. You make them run five suicides. That's up and back, right? Ten sprints. So, and then you tell you get somebody on the on the free throw line, and then you say, if you make it, we done. If you miss it, we got to run another one. And you take the worst free throw shooter that's dog tired and put him on the line to see if he can make a free throw to keep the team from running another sprint. And that was manifest last night with Joel and B because he was dog tired on that free throw line. That was hilarious. You see how long it took him when he initiated that foul 
uh, and he went on to the floor. You see how long it took him to get up off the floor. That was crazy. He was tired. He was tired. So it's going to take him a couple of games to really get it together. The problem is, uh, James, to your point, is it going to be enough? Does he have his, enough time to get it, get his cardio together and get his get his game speed and, and his endurance together? Whether it's enough time or not, he got to do it. He got to show up. Because after the performance he put on in the early parts of the year, it still comes down to are the Philadelphia 76ers going to make it past the second round? That's the only thing I care about. The regular season is irrelevant at this point because we we are fighting to get back to the same situation we were in last year. I know we can get to the playoffs. Can we advance in the playoffs? That's what I need to see. And the way Joel and B was playing early in the year before he got hurt, man, couldn't nobody touch us. Couldn't nobody touch the 76ers. Then he gets hurt. Then Maxi sparks off a little bit. Tobias Harris, he's like a light switch. He's off and on. He was horrible last night. He was terrible. If my, if my grandson jumps in the game, he'll, I'll, I'll tell him to get some anecdotes. So I, I'm wondering where they booing. So, because he looked terrible. But it's one of them things. Some days he'll be good. Some days he'll be bad. So, it's... um. <laughs> It's, it's it's crazy. It's crazy, man. So, <clears throat> so I'm hoping that that Joel and B can get it together, uh, get his stuff, get his his lungs together, man, and get used to going up and down that court uh, and firing away. And um, you know, hopefully, James, hopefully they can get it, man. Uh, if they if they got to take on the Bucks. They can beat they can beat the Bucks and they can beat the Bucks in four. Um Doc is Doc Rivers is lost. Doc Rivers is the NBA's version of um um what's the name? That going at Jason. What's the what's the name? What's the coach from um they used to be with the with the Patriots that's getting all the jobs and they never won nothing? Was with the was with the uh he reneged on the, I think it was the Brown job and then he went to the Raiders. And then never won that. Why I always blank on his name. What is his name? Uh, Raiders last four coaches. Let me see. This will tell me. Um, Josh McDaniels. Thank you, Josh McDaniels. Doc Rivers is the NBA's version of Josh McDaniels, with the exception of at least Doc has won the championship. So Josh McDaniels hasn't won Jack. He hasn't won a damn thing. And y'all, do y'all realize at one point in time we were people were talking about getting him to come in for an interview? Think it think about this. At one point in time, <clears throat> we were Philadelphia fans were seriously looking at um looking at because I said this and I co-signed this. I was like, that would be good. We were trying to get Russell Wilson and Josh McDaniels to, to be the coach. Not at the same time, but just those two players. Just like we were seriously thinking like, man, if we could get Russ Wilson and Jalen Hurst could just kind of learn behind Russell Wilson for a year or two. And like that was a real train of thought because I thought that. So, uh yeah, Jason Boston is going to be tough to beat, bro. They've always been tough to beat. This is, you know, they're the team in the East right now. Uh, at least they were when JoJo got hurt, because clearly we were until that happened. So um, we'll see what's going on. We, we just got to get there first, man, because it looks like if 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 we still, uh, we still got a chance to gain some ground too, because nobody's like, crazy good with the exception of with the exception of boston so um yeah you know I, but i look at like uh james that's a good one um lane kiffin josh mcdaniels had every opportunity in the world at least 
Uh, at least your boy from San Francisco made it to the Super Bowl. You know? So, Doc Rivers, like, I don't know what has happened the last couple years with him. It just just hasn't worked out. It's, it's weird. Very weird. It was like another one. He was good until he wasn't. So, you know, I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, what happened? Shaq says a 94 Dream Team would have beat the 92 Dream Team. I think he is mad about Christian Leitner being on there. Uh, well, I ain't going to get no argument for me because I don't like Christian Leitner. Um, that's a whole UK thing. But, uh, yeah, the 2008 Super Bowl team, you're exactly right. So what have you done for me lately? Like 2008 was not a long time ago, but it was a long time ago. Like think about that. 2008 was 16 years ago. Is that right? 2010, 20, 24. Yeah, 16 years ago. <clears throat> so, um, wow. What have you done for me lately? That That's just the way it goes. That's just the way this the way it goes. Except uh it's like that in the NFL, but not necessarily in the NBA. But I guess my, you know, yeah, Danny Ainge was smart. You know what? Shout out to Danny Ainge too, because he don't get enough credit for being a two way player. He was baseball and basketball. He was good for the Blue Jays. Don't get it twisted. <clears throat> Except his summons. Come on, Bow. You wrong for that. <laughs> Funny. But you're wrong. <laughs> oh my God, man. This whole, you know, the whole country just turned into a big ass reality show, man. It's a damn shame. So, um, yeah, man. Um, we got so much stuff going on. Uh, I forgot about uh, what's the dude's name? Everybody was scared of Jordan. You know what the you know what the funny part is with the Jordan stuff? Uh what would what would be a draft day? I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna get into football in a second, Cody. Hold on to that question. I'm gonna put a star by that question. I'm gonna come back to that later. Um oh the whole Jordan thing. So when Jordan would at, was at his height, and I believe it was the finals when Jordan played uh when they when they beat Utah. Stockton and Malone in Utah. Uh, I was in Canada at the time. I was playing in the in the CFL. I was in Hamilton. And I remember I was with a bunch of players, and we were somewhere watching the game. Ewing, what's going on, dude? Appreciate you joining us, man. Uh, I was up in Canada with, with the Thai Cats, and I remember we was watching the game, and I remember saying out loud, and I was like, man, I want to see – Stockton and Malone win this one. And I remember every, it was about four or five people, four or five of my teammates in the room. And they just all turned around and shot me a look like, man, we will kill you if you go against the Bulls. And that was, that was um, like the Jordan fan base. Jordan, look at it like this. Jordan, um, Jordan was like the Cowboys or like now the Patriots and now the, the, you know, or, you know, the Patriots and now the, the Chiefs. Wasn't nobody liking the Bulls. Everybody liked Michael Jordan when he came in the league, and then it took him so long to finally win the championship. But everybody was just enthused with, you know, be like Mike and the Nikes and the Dunks and all of that kind of stuff. That's when Mikey, uh, that's when Michael Jordan captured the league. It wasn't because he's winning championships. It was because he, he could dunk, and Nike ran the most successful marketing campaign probably we've ever seen be like Mike. He was everywhere and he was, he was bigger. Michael Jordan came along. Uh, in my opinion, Michael Jordan is directly responsible for the ascension of ESPN. Michael Jordan was in his heyday. ESPN was really getting footing and people were going away from wide world of sports and, all of that kind of stuff. I don't even know how you, how, how many of y'all in the chat even remember wild world sports? The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. James, you probably remember it, but um, 
Like, how many of y'all remember 88? If you was born in 88, you might mm, probably not because that was a 70s thing. That was Jim McKay, Howard Cosell. That was like you, you, you didn't leave. You didn't even go outside to play. The ski jump, absolutely. The ski jump, the dude fell on the ski jump, the agony of defeat. Yep. Bourbon wasn't even a thing yet. This was all um, McKay and Howard Cosell. Keith Jackson and, uh, and all of them. It was um, the wild world of sports, man. It was O.J. Simpson was, was commentating every now and then. Um, and then, but, you know, in the 80s, in 84, that's when I believe uh, Jordan... Jordan started doing his thing, dunking on everybody. And then that, because everybody woke up in the morning to watch that early sports center at like seven, eight o'clock in the morning so you could watch the highlights. So Michael Jordan was directly responsible for the ascension of ESPN and James, to your point, Chris Berman, uh, Stuart Scott with the Booyah, all of that kind of stuff, you know, um, all of that kind of stuff. The best why world of sports was when they show under the radar stuff, wrestling, poker, tour. De, yo, I remember the tour de France, man, watching the tour de France and just waiting. Cause you knew, um, somebody was going to fall on that bike and it would cause a domino effect of wrecks behind them. happened every year. Still does to this day. Still does to this day, man. You, but you're right, man. It was all that off the wall stuff. You go there and you watch the uh, them crazy Olympics over in Europe, like in Scotland and England and Ireland, where they throw in the uh, they throw in <laughs> the telephone pole and all that kind of stuff, um, all that kind of stuff, man. Hey, I still watch. I still watch Tour de France. I tune into it too. Watch a little F one. I'm still an F one fan. I'm still a NASCAR fan, even though I don't really think they showed a lot of NASCAR back in the day. Every night they would do the Daytona, but that was about it. But yeah, man, that was that was the ascension, man. That's why Jordan is so important, man. That's why it's so hard for people to let go of who was the best. You know, the the best, you know, is it the best champion? Is it the best basketball player? The best basketball player I've ever seen in my life is LeBron James. Point period in the paragraph. But the best competitor, the best, how do you how do you classify that? How do you classify that? Kobe Bryant is closer to Michael Jordan than LeBron is. Because Kobe Bryant had that killer instinct that Jordan had. LeBron doesn't have that. LeBron is more like magic. Kobe was more like Mike. So, um, <laughs> yo, the arm wrestling championships were lit. I remember that. The arm wrestling championships. Oh, my God. Over the top. <laughs> That was cool, man. That was cool. Um, let me see. Uh, Larry Bird. Is, uh, I, don't, I don't care about JJ Reddick, man. JJ Reddick is caught in the um, in the eras, and he can't get over. You know, he was too young, man. He was too young. So it, it's it's a um, it was a beautiful thing back then, man. And we had the thing with Jordan is. Um, and even that whole era, we were seeing things we had never seen before because Jordan came out and he's jumping from the free throw line or in front of the free throw line. Um, and then he did the windmill dunk. And then we had, we had never seen anything remotely close to that. We had never seen anybody dunk like that. I had because I saw uh, Dominique Wilkins and, and Jordan used to go at it. But before that, I, I remember Dr. J Duncan with the ABA basketball, with the big Afro. I remember Larry Nance. He could jump out the gym. I ain't never seen anybody jump higher than Larry Nance. Go back and look him up. And then you had Spud Webb. That was just the, you know, Spud Webb was what, 5'5"? Five, five? Dunking with two hands? It was ridiculous. And then after Jordan, then you had, you know, Jordan and Dominique used to battle. And then all of a sudden, this dude named Vince Carter came out of nowhere and was just like, oh, my God, what did, what did he just do? We were seeing stuff you had never seen before, and that all just 
raised the level of ESPN because that was the only place you could get it. And everybody, then you notice all the news, Clyde the Glide, Clyde Drexler too. Um, all of the 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 all of the news, ABC, CBS, and all of them were trying to do what ESPN was doing because ESPN was getting the getting the ratings. Dominique used to do that two handed windmill, and it was just oh, my hands used to hurt because I was like, how is he throwing it down so hard like that? And then slowly but surely, everybody was trying to do what ESPN was doing. Everybody was trying to have highlights and all of that kind of stuff. It is very similar to what's going on right now with the social media thing. Very similar. You got the you you had the the CBS and the ABCs. Um, those were the only place where you can get the content. Though they were the big dogs in town. So when ESPN showed up, didn't nobody want to give them two thoughts. Nobody thought ESPN was going to make it. And then all of a sudden, you hear that da-da-da, da-da-da, and then Chris Berman got on there and doing his shtick, and then Stuart Scott started doing his shtick, and then you started getting more personalities, and that became the, the norm. And then you saw that uh, format just you know, duplicated on all the other channels, just not as good. Same thing is happening right now, except ESPN is on the losing end of that. Because everybody's creating content, everybody's creating digital media, um, and some of the stuff that's coming out on the content is on par with a lot of these big media houses. So uh, we filling in the gap. I say this a lot. I say we are at the end of the beginning because we still at the at the beginning of the of the social media thing, and YouTube is a is a relevant uh, source to watch your content, to watch your sports content. Uh, and Tone said this before. What's up, Philly Philly? Um, My guy Tone DeShield said this before, man. It's going to be a, a pay-per-view Super Bowl before it's all said and done. It wouldn't surprise me because that's the way everybody's going. We're going to have another game on Peacock and then somebody else going to get on a deal and then Apple TV and, and then all that kind of stuff. Because I remember I was working at Apple this time. Jason, you remember this. Y'all don't know me and Jason Sink used to work together at Apple and Chair Hill. He's my dude. But I remember when Apple TV came out and people were laughing at it. Why would I buy Apple TV when I can get a, a Amazon Fire Stick? I'm not paying for that. You ain't got nothing on it. Ain't no content. I'm not paying for that. Yeah. And then slowly but surely, uh, they got that one show. Uh, with Jason Momoa, C, where he the blind dude, that took off. And then you had, um, uh, what's his name? What's the dude from Philly to make the, the the spooky movies? M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan did a, did a show, a series on it. And then slowly but surely, you started getting good content that was getting good reviews. And people were like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. Speaking of shows real quick, I'm going to take this sidebar very quickly. If y'all saw my post the other day on Twitter, now I have been, <clears throat> I have been growing this channel for about a year and a half. I'm like, I'm like 17 months in, I think somewhere around that a little over a year and a half. Right. So I've been doing this content, the YouTube thing. I've been consistent and I've been dedicated to it. I've been putting out stuff almost to the point, almost every day before I was like trying to put out two or three videos a week. Now I'm putting out content almost every day, consistently. So I'm dedicated to this, trying to take it to the next level, right? And I had my first setback. Man, when I tell you I started watching Shogun, I was like, oh, why they show me this? And I ain't even start from the beginning. I just happened to turn on episode seven. And I like I couldn't stop stop watching it. And I was like, man, I'm going to have to go all the way back to the damn beginning. And I'm going to have to start this show because it looks, it's got that Game of Thrones. It's got that Westworld feel to it, like as far as the story. And just, I done missed so much. Now I got to go back and start from square one and try to watch the show again because it is that good. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to lose some time. I got I to gotta figure out how to balance this time, man, because that's the last thing I needed. Was that's why listen, I, that's why I don't play any games no more. 
That's why I don't play the video games no more. Jason, you used to you, you remember how um how solid we had a, of a Destiny group at Apple. We had a solid group of people. We played Destiny, Destiny, and Destiny Two daily. Daily, I'd be up three or four o'clock in the morning running a raid. We was tight with that. And this is this is the same thing, man. And then when it, when when um, when Lost was on, it would be groups of people at Apple. I would come in there, and immediately everybody would be like, "Up, oh, Coach, don't say nothing. I didn't see it." And I would get frustrated because that was one of those shows where you had to talk to somebody. And we had a group of about, about five or six people that was watching the show. We get together and we talk about it. And like Lost was one of them shows. I was writing down notes. I was taking notes on that stuff. So Lost, Westworld, Game of Thrones. I was in the Game of Thrones because I read the books. The books were off the chain. And the show was even, was good. As good as the show was, the books are even better. So now I'm trying to figure out a way how the hell. Because I before I saw Shogun, I was trying to figure out a way how I could squeeze in time to read the book, A Three-Body Problem, before I watched the show on Netflix. Because everybody's telling me about that saying the three body problem is off the chain. So I'm like I, I got to read the book before I before I watch it. So uh this um yeah man, Jason, you remember? Dude, they used to talk about Game of Thrones, man. I used to be all into that show. We was have fun, man. We used to have fun. And when I get into shows like this, and as soon as I started, as soon as I watched that show for 5 minutes, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be a problem." So, I got to go back and I got to go watch episode one because uh, a lot of y'all might not remember. A lot of y'all might be too young. Uh, Shogun, that was a miniseries that came on in the 80s. And I, that was a big deal in the 80s when the miniseries came on. So um, Cody K, the ending of Game of Thrones drove me nuts too. Uh, it could have been better. Um, yeah, they didn't stick the discount on that. Dude, you get no argument from me. And George R.R. R. Martin better finish them damn books. I'm tired of waiting. That's some nonsense. He got he better finish them daggone books. Um, but yeah, they didn't they didn't stick the landing, but still. Um, yo, lost <laughs> Philly Philly. I'm telling you, bro. Loss was loss was it. I used to come in my office where I'm got my stuff set up for this podcast right now. I used to close the door. I would tell my wife, because my wife didn't watch it. She don't she don't like the sci-fi and spooky stuff like Lost was. Loss wasn't really spooky, but it had his moments. Um, but I used to come in my office and I used to tell my wife, do not bother me. Do not open the door. Lost is on. I would turn out the lights and I would have me a notebook and I would watch Lost. And then I would go to HBO and they would have a show about Lost. And then I would go on YouTube and I would watch a podcast about Lost. And I was listening, man, I was all up in it. I was crazy about that show. So um it is is crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh Ball says, How could the show have ended if the book hasn't ended? Because they had to run on the show, man, and it was getting to uh they had to make a decision. They was about to jump the shark. Let me say it like that. If you if you were uh if you fan of the 70s or the 80s, you know what I mean. Uh, they happy. They was going towards the happy days. They was about to jump the shark. And also, I think it would have been a different situation if if, if George R. R. Martin would have been getting the books out in a timely fashion, but he wasn't. So what he did was, uh, from my understanding, he gave them a synopsis of what he wanted the show to be, and they kind of took it and ran with it. And they came up with their own ending. I just didn't like it. I, I like where they went with it, but I didn't. I didn't like. I didn't like the the period at the end of it. I thought it should have went another way. You got a whole situation with Jon Snow, him being a Targaryen and all of that kind of stuff. Like, dude, don't get me in that rabbit hole, bro. Just, we we supposed to be talking sports. <laughs> don't give don't get me in that rabbit hole, man. I won't shut up. Like, we can do that later. But uh, yeah, um, I, I need him to I need him to get them um, to get that show. John Snow was on water skis. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, Jason, 
Um, I never watched The Wire. Never watched The Wire. I heard about it. Everybody said it's excellent. One of the best shows ever. Never watched it. I remember, I remember seeing a couple of episodes, and it was just clips of when old, what was the old boy's name that used to come out and used to whistle, and everybody used to go running. What what was his name? He was the main baddie on the show, I think. Um, was it Omar? Was it Omar? That was the main the main dude, Philip K. Williams. Yeah, Omar. So. But I, I saw a couple clips of that, and then I remember seeing one episode. What was the what was the girl, um, the gang banging girl? I can't remember her name either. But I just remember that I saw a scene. I thought it was funny, where she went in, uh, she went in like a Home Depot to buy some power tools to kill a dude, and she started talking to the dude. And he was giving her helpful hints and stuff like that. And she ended up pulling out a knot full of money and, and tipping him for his advice. And she walked out with the saw or whatever it was. I just thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, I never watched The Wire, man. So um, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm I'm too far gone with that, dude. I'm, I'm so far. I'm so behind because I'm, I'm, I'm so uh, dedicated and ingrained in the uh, and doing this podcast, I can't go back and watch it. I'm dude, I've still got to watch season four of, of Stranger Things. I'm when I say I'm behind, I'm behind, bro. I'm behind. So, but yeah, I'm um like all them shows are good, man. All them shows are good. Just just don't not enough time in the day, man. Not enough time in the day. So um, but in any case, man. Uh, <laughs> I might have to. I might just start another whole another podcast about about the TV shows because that is that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Uh, drug conspiracy. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, uh, let's get back to business, man. Let's get back to business. So, uh, how how is everybody feeling? How was everybody feeling after the with the aftermath of the Hassan Reddick trade? How's everybody feeling with that? Now, you guys know I did not want Hassan Reddick to leave. Yeah, I might have to do that, Jason. I might have to look into that. <laughs> uh, but that means if I do that, that means I got to start watching the show. And uh, I don't know if I got enough time. Uh, yeah, Cody K, uh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I was not very happy that they got rid of him, but I understand. I understand what had to be done. And that, that makes sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it, it's, I get it. Um, so basically, we just swapped Bryce Huff for Hassan Reddick. And and I'm I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So let me see. Give me one second. There we go. So I I'm I'm good with that, man. I, I understand that that's the nature of the beast. It's a business. Um and they and they um they did what they had to do. His asking price was too much. And if you think about it like this, Hassan Reddick basically is just a victim of bad timing. Because he's in the same situation, if you think about it. He's in the same situation that C.J. Gardner-Johnson was when he left. The same exact situation. He played. He played above his contract. But the his asking price was too big. And here's the weird thing. I don't think the Jets have given him his asking price. He's still making the same money. So I am going to assume that the Jets are going to somehow restructure his contract, do something to give him that bump in pay that he was looking for. Or else, why did they pay him? Or why did they accept the trade? That's what I don't understand. The flip side of that is Bryce Huff had a great year with the 10 sacks, 
But why would you let a 25-year-old go? That's what I don't understand. If Bryce Huff had not have been undrafted, and now mind you, this is what, he's going into his fifth year? So, uh, hold on, where my notes at? Where my notes at? Um, Bryce Huff, he only played 460 snaps, so they used him according to, um, you know, uh, situational. 460 snaps, 29 tackles, 19 of those were solos, and 10 sacks with one pass defender. So those are pretty decent, but the, the sack stat is what everybody looks at at his position. So, I'll, okay, I'm good with that. James, we'll get into – We'll, we'll we'll get into to Stefan in a second, but what is what's the difference with um his contract? I saw Reddick. Let me see Hassan Reddick, uh, Philadelphia Eagles including bonus. No, 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 no. Is this up to date? Okay, so in 2024, so this upcoming year, Hassan Reddick, his base salary is 14.2. 14.2 million. He gets a $250,000 workout bonus, uh, other miscellaneous incentives. He's a $15 million cap hit. Um, so his average salary right now is is little little over 15 million, right? So I am assuming that. He is going to, the Jets are going to somehow redo his deal. Or else why did why did why didn't they sign? Why didn't they why did he go to the Jets? Well, we got a better squad here. Philly, Philly, I agree with you. I think the Jets are all in this year with Aaron Rodgers. I don't think they're gonna pay us on the money he's looking for either. Um they have a bunch of young players that got that got to get paid eventually. We both in that boat. I agree with you 100. percent We are both in that boat because you saw what just happened with um, you saw what just happened with Landon Dickerson, Mylotta. We just brought back Avante Maddox, C.J. Garner Johnson got paid. Um, so we put the money out, and we still got one Devonte Smith to worry about. I know that's coming. So we still got that to worry about. And here's something. Dig this, though. I never thought about this until today. When they do Devontae Smith's contract, are they going to pay him more than A.J. Brown? Think about that for a second. Are they going to pay Devontae Smith more than A.J. Brown? And what is that going to do to that dynamic? Because think about it. We are in a situation where we got two number one wide receivers. Two of them. And both of them are as advertised. Without question. So somebody got to get paid. AJ, uh, let's see where AJ is. Jay Brown. Wait a minute. I think I wrote this down. AJ Brown signed a four-year, $100 million contract with the Eagles. Um, 23.4 signing bonus, 57 guaranteed. Annual salary is $25 million. In 2024, uh, AJ Brown's annual salary will be, his base salary will be $1.1 million. His signing bonus will be 19. So he's going to make 20 million. Um, 24. He's 27 years old. So he is going to make 18 million this year. 18 million this year, 18 million next year. Um, and then if he lasts that long, he's due 20 million in 2026. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So. Uh, I know big contracts take time, but why do you think Devontae Smith isn't signed yet? 
they should sign him before Jefferson and Higgins and see. Yes, I agree. I agree 100%. But this is a... Um, honestly, that might be something that the agents are doing. Because this is when the agent has to do his due diligence. This is when the agent has to do his due diligence. And the agent will say, just like, again, just like the same situation last year with C.J. Gardner-Johnson. I don't blame him at all. He outplayed his contract. That dude missed five games and led the league in interceptions or was tied for the lead in interceptions. So he, he's got a right to go for his bag because that opportunity might not ever come again. So he did. His asking price was too much, and the market said otherwise. So whatever, whatever C.J. Gardner-Johnson had to be asking at the end of 22 – was way above what the market would dictate, was way above what any other team was going to give him because he ended up going to he ended up going to uh Detroit for what seven million, eight million, or something like that. The Eagles could have gave him that easy. That's why the 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 he his asking price was to the, the market will say what you're gonna get. CJ Garner Johnson. Uh oh. Stephon Diggs. I don't know. I can't find him. Trying to see what his contract was. And for some reason, he ain't popping up. We'll find it later. But. Uh, was it eight million? Anthony Abbasi. I haven't seen that name before, but I appreciate you joining me, man. Giving good information and insight. I appreciate you, bro. Um, yeah, but bow, that's that's what they're supposed to do. That's what they get paid to. They get paid exactly for situations just like this. So I'm gonna guess. I'm just guessing that when CJ Gardner Johnson left he was probably looking for about 10 11 million dollars and how he was like yeah yeah no so but my guess is he his agent put that number they riding high you tied for the league in interceptions we just went to the uh to the super bowl you, you strike while the iron is hot so put your best offer out there and let's see what happens and he did that. So I'm going to guess he probably went for like, you know, $10, $12 million. And Howard was like, yeah, no. And there was no other teams that were willing to give that money. So he goes to, to Detroit for $8 million. And again, I know I've explained the situation umpteen times on my cast. If you remember, Howie was about to sign C.J. Gardner-Johnson and Bradbury and Slay were about to be let go. When every when the bottom fell out of that deal with CJ Gardner Johnson, Bradbury was immediately re-signed. Slay was immediately re-signed. And now I know this um, because I remember that day. <laughs> it's funny because I recorded a I recorded a, a video for the channel. I was in the car. I was in the car going to get my wife something to eat for lunch. But I had to talk about it because uh, Jennifer Slay was all over Twitter talking about it's been real Philly. I love you guys. And she was giving all these accolades like they were about to leave. We'll see what happened next and all of that kind of stuff. They were packing. They were about to get ghost. And then the bottom fell out. And then the next day, Slay was like, you never know what happens. So it C.J. Gardner Johnson just outshot his market. Don't blame him one bit for going to get his bag. It just didn't work out for him. Same situation with Hassan Reddick. In my opinion, if anybody on the Eagles deserved to get their payday, it was Hassan Reddick. Didn't give you no trouble. The only thing he did was just get out there and ball. 
Um, I remember him getting questioned during the season about his contract, and he said, we're not going to talk about it now. He did everything you want your players to do, especially your veteran leadership players. He did everything to the T. And then you get to a situation like this, and it doesn't move the way you want to move. <clears throat> because the market, the market says he should be getting paid a lot more money. Howie said no. I would have kept him. But now you got the big question mark. Now you got the big question mark. What's he going to do on the other side of 30 years old? Mid-season, he'll be 31. What are you going to do with that? That's a big if that nobody wants to talk about. If you're turning 30 or if you're undrafted. Can you imagine if Jalen Carter had the stats that Bryce Huff had last year? They had to put Howie Roseman on the pedestal. You did it again, Howie. Everybody else skipped on him. You did the homework. And you got a generational talent. But because Bryce Huff uh, was undrafted, he don't get those type of accolades, even though he put up the numbers. So we'll see if it was a if it was a one hit wonder. We'll see. Um, Jason, I think you one hundred percent right here, bro. I think they're going to extend, uh, restructure his deal, find a way to say find a way to pay him some money and save some money at the same time. Um, so yeah, I think you, um, I think you hit the nail on the head, bro. And how he's done that in the past. <clears throat> we going to take care of, we gonna take care of him. The question is, when are we going to take care of him? Is it going to happen before draft day? Because I, I got the feeling that how he's making all of these deals. You saw what happened to my Lotta and Dickerson and Maddox and Blankenship. Um, we're getting all of these deals done. And you do that because now you know how much money you got left. Because don't forget, and, and the reason why, Jason, I think you're you're correct is because we still got to sign these. We still got to sign pick number 22 and all the other draft picks that we end up getting. We still got to make that happen. The benefit for the Eagles is uh, eventually um, – I think next year the the salary cap's going to go up again because all these new television deals they are getting, all these cable all these cable deals, Hulu, Amazon, um, Peacock, all these deals that they making with the NFL are paying dividends. That's why they can raise the salary cap. So there's pluses and minuses to watching that game on Peacock. So. There's pluses and minuses in situations like that, and we good, and we got to deal with it. Uh, 88s, uh, I'm with you 100%. Justin Jefferson is going to try to break the bank. He's going to try to break the bank. And, and if you are Devontae Smith's representation, it makes sense not to try to get a deal done until that happens because you know J.J. is going to set the market, period. He's going to be the guy, and everybody's going to say, all right, my stats, his stats, let's meet somewhere in the middle. So that's exactly what's going to happen. Dude, James, out. <laughs> Yo, we're gonna start calling um we're gonna start calling Carson Wentz Mordor. Cause like the, the name that shan't be spoke. <laughs> Carson Wentz. Good for him, man. Good for him. Uh yeah, something like that. Something like I, I still don't think it'll um I got a feeling it'll be before the draft. I could be wrong. I could be wrong for the reason I was just saying. Uh, what benefit 
does it well I don't even want to say it like that because it it would it would be better for the Eagles if they do it sooner rather than later. So um but we'll see. We'll see how they how they make their uh their thing. I just reached out to uh I reached out to Barrett. I haven't heard anything back. So he said about uh between 7 30 and 7 45. So hopefully nothing happened and he'll still be able to get on. But sometimes it gets busy and I don't know. So we'll see. But guess what? I'm gonna keep on talking, keep on, keep on keeping on. Hopefully he will he will join us soon. But yeah, man. Um uh, yeah, we're gonna call him Mordor, man. Mordor. Um yeah, he just don't don't speak his name. He had his he had his opportunity and he messed it up. A lot like a lot of people don't understand like how bad that is. You you getting into it with Darren Sproles, out of all people, Darren Sproles, but um you mad because another you pouting because another teammate won the Super Bowl and you didn't. Um uh dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him that too, Bow, when he come on. Uh, White Castle trips. <laughs> I miss White Castles too. I don't know. Is there a White Castle down in South Jersey somewhere? I ain't really trying to go all the way to Philly. Got to be somewhere down here, man. Need something different sometimes. But uh, so we'll we'll see what happens with Devonte, man. It, it his representation is doing what they're supposed to do. That they're, they're taking the right uh, course of action. Because it doesn't benefit Devontae Smith to sign ASAP. Because he's going to get his money. If he stays healthy, he's going to get his money. So we're good to go in that regard. Um, you got CJ Gardner Johnson. Um, and, and also, well, let's leave this, let's leave the secondary alone for a second, which is like Trent Dilfer. Well, at least Trent Dilfer played. Trent Dilfer uh, started. The defense won the Super Bowl, but you got they scored. Trent Dilfer had to score a touchdown at some point in time or make a drive. So, you know, at least he gets some credit for that. But uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're definitely not wrong. But um, so with, with, um, with Fletch leaving, with Fletch leaving, um, what are you guys' thoughts on, you know, our defensive line now? So we got Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith, uh, Milt Williams, uh, Ajomo, Brandon Graham, and Bryce Huff. That's a pretty decent offensive line. And I've been saying this all week. If you guys uh, was with me on my, my live at lunch the other day, um, I would argue this is one of the questions I got for Barrett when he when he jumps on. Um, I would argue that our defense right now, with the missing pieces, with Devin White, um, with everybody, I think um, our defense right now is better than it was at the end of last year. In my opinion, even with the loss of Fletch. And the loss of Hassan. I think just by default, um, Vic Fangio is going to make the defense better. And I think um, just by him being a defensive coordinator, coordinator, that is going to put our defense in the middle of the pack. Now, let's just start right there. Because we got a better coaching situation. That moves us up, and I'm not trying to say we're going to be great. I'm just saying we're going to be average, middle of the pack. To me, that's average, right? If you want to put us at the bottom middle, I can live with that. I can live with that. But having said that, now you got uh, everybody on the defensive line. So you still got uh, Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith, Nolan Smith and Josh Sweat, uh, it's going to be a lot of pressure on them to perform. 
especially Nolan Smith. You gotta you gotta prove that that draft pick was worth it. So now you're gonna have the opportunity, and hopefully your shoulder don't pop out. But um, you gotta have uh, the op. You, you gotta you gotta show and prove. Basically, you gotta show and prove. Um, trying to see what uh, outside linebacker. See, I don't know. Those are. Uh, I'm trying to find uh, like NFL. That I want to see how many snaps he played. That's what I want to see. Uh, Cody, am I going to a preseason game this year? Uh, I would probably go to whenever they decide to have the alumni game. That's usually the preseason game I go to. So whenever they usually uh, will announce that. Um, I know one year it ended up being a, it was like the fan appreciation thing. It wasn't a game. It was a live practice. And they used that as alumni day. Uh, this past year, it was Tampa Bay, maybe. But they usually have an alumni day, and we all get together and, and chill out and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'll probably be at a preseason game, but it'll probably be whenever the alumni game is. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I most likely will, as long as the weather's right. It ain't nothing stupid going on, as long as it ain't snowing or something dumb. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably go to a preseason game. I honestly prefer to watch the games at home, man. Um, yeah, that's right. It was the Browns game. You're absolutely right. It was the Browns game. So uh, I'm gonna do that again. I was trying to live stream at that game, and um, dude, I could <laughs> AT and T just wasn't cutting it that day. Um, but I'm sure it's hard to do that in a stadium full of all them people, especially on the field when you got all of the interference and all the equipment going off. Um, so it, it's, it's, um, but I, I, I definitely want to do that. Um, yeah, I had a, I had a lapel mic on and I made the mistake of, I didn't realize it. I had the, I had inadvertently turned the volume all the way up. So the audio is almost, you can't listen to it because it sounds like very distorted. It sounds like what you think it would when you when you get a, a bad pair of headphones from the dollar store and you turn it up all the way. That's what it sounded like. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try it again because I, I like doing that. I like live streaming. Um, if I can get a signal to do it, because I was, man, I was sitting next to uh, or right in front of uh, Aditi Kinkabwala. Um, saw all of the NFL network people there. Um, took some pictures. I was hanging with the GOAT, um, Carmichael. Um, so, like, it was fun. And we always have fun hanging with each other and seeing each other again and all that kind of stuff, man. So I always enjoy that. So, but, yeah, it, it, it's... um. You know, I will be there. I will definitely be there. So whenever they decide to give us that letter and, and, and send the email and let us know, we get the new shirts. Um, we usually play. Well, you got to remember, um, I don't know what's going to what's going to happen this year because they're going to need the team's going to need extra time for that Brazil trip. So. That's going to mess with the schedule a little bit. The last preseason game at home. So I'm, I'm wondering how they're going to do that. I'm going to have to look at the schedule about that because that might mess some things up a little bit. So, uh, but we'll we'll see how that works out. We'll see how that works out. Um, I know uh, maybe we'll play that. I mean, it changes every year, but I want to see. I just want to. I want to go. To practice. I'm going to try to go to at least one practice uh, this preseason. I didn't get to go to any. I haven't been to a to an open practice in a while. It was. It's been. It's got to be like six or seven years before I, since I've been to an open practice. 
where they let all of the uh, the alumni come in and stuff like that. So, um, man, I'm gonna have to put a I'm gonna have to put a I'm gonna have to make a video, an actual slideshow video, with all the pictures I got from like the alumni days, man. I got pictures with like Brian Westbrook and uh, Jeffrey Lurie. I got a ton of pictures with Howie Roseman, um, uh, me, Willie T, Irvin, Hollis Thomas, uh, Vaughn Hebron. Uh, Calvin Williams, um, everybody, man. And we just, you know, be dark, tons of pictures, man. It's just like that stuff is fun, man. And uh, yeah, I got to put something together with that, but I got a ton of pictures that I ain't even used yet. So, but yeah, man, it's um, we'll we'll see what they do, what they tell us, but but. I'm saying all of that to say to answer yes, Cody. I am going to a preseason game, so should be fun. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know what they're going to do with uh, going to Brazil and the travel arrangements for that, because that is going to change some things. So, so we'll see what they're going to have to do. But um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the pressure on Josh Sweat. Um, hold on for a second. I'm getting a message from Barrett right now. Yeah, he said he was running late, so he just walked in the door and he he's gonna jump on as soon as he can. So, uh, and if you guys are listening, it looks like I got uh thirty something people on the Twitterverse. Um, if you don't mind, all my all my family on the Twitterverse, if you could check me out on youtube i would greatly appreciate it and if you are on the youtubes please smash that like button click on that notification bell you know the routine you know the routine man so uh we're gonna give it a couple minutes barrett's in the building um he's gonna come on in a couple minutes so he was apologizing i was like man it's all good i understand i understand uh the way that it goes so we will keep this conversation going until Barry gets on. But um, the one person that I don't think we talk about enough is Ojomo. He just hasn't gotten enough snaps. Milt Williams showed up a little bit. Ojomo just kind of got overshadowed, but we have a good defensive line. Devin, um, Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith, Milt Williams, Ojomo, Brandon Graham. We are okay on the defensive line. Are we going to lose some of that production from Fletcher Cox? There's a good chance. And I say a good chance because we don't know what Bryce Huff is going to do. We don't know how that's going to play out. So it could be, you know, I, I am interested now. The criticisms are valid because we do have to see what he can do in a real rotation when he's playing um, five, 600 snaps in a year. Um, what did he have? I had the stats written down. 460 snaps, not really a lot of snaps. When Fletcher Cox was playing like 800-something snaps or something ridiculous like that at his age and still making an impact, that's off the chain. People don't, in my opinion, People outside of Philadelphia don't talk about Fletcher Cox enough. They want to throw Bosa and, and Aaron Donald, and rightfully so, rightfully so, but Fletcher Cox should be in some of those conversations. Easy. Easy. Uh, would you trade and pay jo for Josh Allen? Hell no. Why would I do that? No, I don't want Josh Allen. I don't. I want. I'm trying to figure out how to say this and avoiding the bias that I have for Jalen Hurts. Because Josh Allen, for all intents and purposes, the measurables and all of that kind of stuff, he he checks all the boxes. This is off the charts. Cannon arm, fast, big. Um, but man, he throws interceptions like he's giving away candy sometimes. Because you look at you look at the situation with Jalen this year and all the turnovers he had, um, 
man, Cody K, man, I'm going to smack you in the ear, man, like my grandmama used to say. I'm thinking you're talking about Josh Allen. I'm like, why the hell would we trade for Josh Allen? You got me on a quarterback ride. <laughs> talking about the quarterbacks. <laughs> Josh Allen outside linebacker. Got you. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Uh, sure, why not? Are you talking about getting him as a free agent or trading somebody for him? Because it, it, it would depend on, because like right now, even, look, I'll just say it like this. Whoever we get at linebacker, whoever we get at linebacker right now is better than what we had last year, period. Period. Right now, Devin White and Zach Bond and N'Kobe Dean. Rock the artist. What's up? Devin White, N'Kobe Dean, and Zach Bond. And remember, I'm saying this. Remember, I'm saying this. Zach Bond is going to be better than people think. He is going to be better than advertised. He's going to be, he, I think, Zach Bond is going to be in, like in another situation like uh, like uh, T.J. Edwards was. Because didn't nobody expect Jack from T.J. Edwards. Nobody thought T.J. Edwards was going to do a thing. And the only thing he did was make every damn tackle on the field. So, I, I will... We'll see how that ends up and how that manifests itself. But to me, that goes back to what I said earlier about Vic Fangio, about our defense just being by default better because Fangio is the coordinator. The coaching situation had so much to do with the downfall at the end of the year. You cannot have two voices in a room. There can only be one leader. And when you fight in philosophies and stuff like that, I've been in that situation. It's not fun. Uh, and you're worried about too many other things. And the minute you have one thing from one coach and something for when one thing works and another thing doesn't, and you looking at sides and it, it's a mess, it's a hot mess. So the chaos that was swirling around last year on our defense I blame that on Sirianni because he shouldn't have made that switch like he did. I want to know what else was going on because for the most part, our defense played okay. We had some games where our defense bailed us out. We did have some games like that. I like to bring up the, the, the game against the Rams where we shut them down in the second half, the game against the uh, the Chiefs. Well, the Chiefs, uh, we did shut them down in the second half, but that was also because they dropped some balls too. So uh, let's keep it real. Keep it 100. Keep it 100. Um, yeah, so Cody K, if he's an unrestricted free agent and franchise tag, that means he's a very expensive free agent, and I doubt how he would do that. I would. That would be nice if he did. I don't see him doing it. I don't see him doing that. So... Um, you know, we got a um, Steelers are quietly. Uh, James, the Steelers, uh, no. The Steelers are not there yet until I see what Russell Wilson is going to do. So, um, but as we live and breathe, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the man with the plan has just arrived. He is in the building. And let me bring him in with no delay, ladies and gentlemen. The man, Super Bowl champion and former Eagles offensive tackle, Barrett Brooks, is in the building. Mark, what's, what's up, on, bro? Man, what I, bro, I was trying to get here. I was hauling behind, bro. It's crazy. Good? Now, uh, now, I want people just Google right now traffic over the Walt Women Bridge. Oh, oh. what's going on? No, this is uh. something different right now. There's something going on right now. Really? Something it's backed up all the way for the. If you look it up, you'll see. I I even went back streets, and the back streets are are are, are blocked up. It's something huh. going on right now. You tell me what's going on. I I this I I was trying I see to see it. I can. I see what's, it. what's going on? 
Traffic nightmare near Philadelphia as cops negotiate with man on overpass. Oh, see? Man threatening to jump from a highway overpass is causing miles of traffic delays around one of the arteries in in and out of Philadelphia. Wow. Somebody, oh, what? There's some crazy man out there or something? That's what it says. Bro, the traffic is, is unreal. It's, it's unbelievable, man. I, I'm like... I was so hot. I mean, just sitting there. Well, I was on the bridge. I was literally on the bridge for a solid 30 minutes. Oh. So then I got off, went over, went on towards Autobahn. And I'm sitting in traffic there, too. Just not even moving. It's not even moving, bro. Wow. It's crazy. I'm trying but, to see if there's... Uh, this, is on, this is from New Jersey 101.5. And this was reported three hours ago. So... Um, yeah, I could just see the domino effect that that could have if they blocked off the street. If they blocked it off from both ways, so all of them cars got to turn around and go somewhere else. Bruh. And I could just see the gridlock that that could. Oof. I'm hot as fish grease, man. So I'm trying to get. I'm like, look, <laughs> this is crazy, crazy. It's all good. It's all good. But Everybody hey, man, saying what's up to you. My birds right now making it happen, bro. Man, your birds right now is paying out some cabbage right now is what they doing. Right, right, right. Oh, Cody K, what's up? What's up? Sink, what's going on? Okay. How y'all doing on. today? Yeah, man. It, it's it's we've been talking about um well, you know what? We'll continue this conversation, man. I, I've been saying this um with we'll get into the, the aftermath of Hassan Reddick, but with Hassan Reddick being gone and Fletch gone. I still believe, it is my opinion, that as our defense sits right now with the players that we have right now, I still think our defense is better than what we ended up with last season. No question. And I'm saying that strictly on the strength of just having Vic Fangio just by default puts us in the middle of the pack. Not too good, not too bad. If you want to put us at the bottom middle, that's fine. But just with all of the chaos in the coaching situation over and we have the man, Vic Fangio, the man for that system, I think we are in the middle of the pack without sight unseen. Sight unseen. And, and, and you know what it is? I tell people all the time that if you're thinking out there, you're already three steps behind. Already three if steps If you have behind. to think about what you have to do, you're, you're three beat. steps behind. You're beat. You're at, exactly. Yep. And – Nobody knew what to do and how to get there and do something. And that's the problem. When you play defense, everybody has to play in concert. Everybody has a gap that they have to maintain. They right. have to make sure that they know the covers. I mean, and, and these guys didn't know that. They, 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 because they didn't know the, the defense, everybody played slower than they would. Have. I was crying and complaining and, and, and yelling and cussing on pre and post game show <laughs> on ABC. Every single weekend, because I'm breaking down a film, looking at the film, there were times I see two and three guys in the same gap. And that's why we were getting gashed like we were in the run game. I mean, go back and watch the, the, the Arizona game. You'll see there's a safety, a linebacker, and a nose guard in one gap. They're in the C gap. I'm like, yeah. how is this possible? Because nobody knew what to do. And then once it started going that way, Everybody just became disheartened on the defensive side of the ball, and they stopped playing. And, you know, I, I think that's a lot of what happened with Bradbury. I think Bradbury just was like, you know what? Hey. Just shut it down. I, I Man, I ain't got nothing on it. You know, you put something on it, I ain't putting nothing else on it. Right. They're playing not to get hurt. Yeah. And it it, it, it it showed. Some guys made some business decisions. You know, because I know Bradbury is not that bad. I, I know no. he's bad right now, but he's not that bad. Because the money he got paid in 22 was worth it. It was definitely worth it. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. you know, uh, like, I don't know, man. I, I would want to know, like, what like what was the catalyst that made Sirianni and, and, and Roseman say, all right, we're going to demote Sean Desai? Because Sean Desai, there were some games, we were talking about this earlier, there were some games where the defense came in, I always use the example of the Rams game. We shut them down in the second half. That's a defensive adjustments because Puka Nakua was killing us in the first half. And we turned it around and shut them down in the second half. That's a defensive adjustment. Sean decided that was his fault. 
So you if you're going if you're going to ridicule him, you got to give him the praise when he when he when he turns it up. Can't fit again. Yeah. Same way. So, so I don't to all drop past it. No, I mean, nah. you will your luck sometimes. But at the end of the day, they shut down the best offense at that time. They shut them down. They shut down the Miami Dolphins. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody put their track shoes on and he stopped them. They stopped them. So what he, he was doing, doing was working. Right. Yeah. But I think it was more so he didn't get along with the players that he was trying to coach. I think that had a lot to do with why they made that decision. They just didn't get along with the coach. I don't think that they bought into his system, bought into everything that he had to say. And once you know the Navy started getting restless and it was hard to really keep things going in the right direction. So they made that, that you know, that 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 jump. I, I wouldn't have done it. I mean, that no. just shows a it, it's it's a total disrespect of a coach doing that. You you can't do that to a coach midway through the season. Midway. I mean, I Dude. I had it done before, Mark. I mean, bro, we're playing Marcus, we're playing uh Coach Marcus, we're playing. 49ers and we had this he's a he was actually like a ga like he was a like a specialist at the time comes in assistant he's helping assistant us coach and that's that's <laughs> his bill musgrave he was actually on a damn roster on somebody's roster the year before damn. and halfway through the season he ends up being our um our, our offensive coordinator our offensive coordinator not just a quarterback coach the offensive coordinator. Yeah. They fired Dana. Well, they didn't fire Dana Bobble. He was still in the building. They just gave him some other title. They put him somewhere else. But he was no longer Ray Rose. He was no longer the the uh, the offensive coordinator. And uh, Ray said, "Look, Bill Musgrave became our, our coach halfway through the season." So I've seen it happen before. Yeah, man, and, and I, don't, I don't understand the logic in that, though, man. I, I don't. I don't. There is it. no good logic in it. You, no. You've lost. You've lost. You know, the game is done. You know, you, you, you can't come back from something like that. You know, I hey. had a coach quit on us. I had a coach quit on us. A head coach quit on us. Hey. I'm playing against the Detroit Lions. I'm playing with the Detroit Lions. And Bobby Ross just yep. lost the team and <laughs> quit. You know what I'm saying? Mueller, Coach yeah. Mueller became the head coach, you know, former coach of, of Michigan. Yep. He became the head coach. I remember that. So, like uh, people, like the average person doesn't un really understand what it means when you say when you lose a team. Because mm. when you lose a team, that means everybody's sucking their teeth in meetings. Right. <laughs> Don't nobody mm. want to listen to anything you said. And I thought it was interesting in that context. And then you hear this story by Jeff McClain about Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat chasing sacks. Because yep. basically, if when you quit on your team, the mindset is, "F it, I'm gonna get mine. I'm gonna get mine." And that's why the, that's why I was questioning. I'm like, I know Hassan Reddick can 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 play the run. I've seen him play the run before, and guys start going for and, and getting theirs. And that's exactly what happened to the the um the '98 Eagles team I played on. We went three and thirteen because guys started freestyling and do what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. They stopped going out and having team concept. They were trying to, hey man, I, I got to put some good tape on film because uh, if I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get a uh, nobody's going to come in and and and, and, and you know want to sign me. So I got to, I got to do mine. I got to get myself done. Right. My boy Jason is like uh, for both of you. Is it easier to play for a coach who played in the league versus a coach who never played at that level? Honestly, it depends on the coach. Yeah. Because there's there's some guys that played in the league and they shouldn't be coaching. Right. 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 Uh, if you want to use that example, look at um, look at some of them coaches in the XFL last year. They got embarrassed. <laughs> some yep. of them dudes got embarrassed because they, they think because they played in the league and because you were all pro or a borderline Hall of Fame DB or something like that, that you're just going to show up and everybody going to listen to you. It's all about personality. It doesn't necessarily mean X's and O's because you can have uh, – that's why I think the, the – uh, that's what I think the the plus the pro for Sirianni is. As much as you don't like him, or you don't think he's a great offensive coach, that dude has got something that kept that locker room together. Right, right. And everybody right, right. can't do that because that they had every opportunity to basically just uh, throw that locker room in upheaval, and they would have had every right to. Yep. But because of his relationship with them players and the type of person he is, um. That means something. So it's not always um, 
ex players or anything like that. If you a good coach, you a good coach. Doesn't matter what your background is. In fact, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Usually, the Pro Bowl, the 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 you know the, the Hall of Fame s type of coaches that you know they're usually the worst coaches in all actuality. Yep. It's the coaches that you know that 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 have rode the bench, been behind somebody like Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson was a great coach because he watched right. the game. He watched Brett Favre do everything in front of him. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you see <laughs> it say, uh, you know, you look at the coach, a couple of coaches they have on a Mike Singletary. Although I love Mike Singletary because he saved, he saved that tight end when he when he said, look, can't win with him. I would rather get a penalty every play right. than have a play. Can't do it. Can't win yep. with him. Can't win yep, him. Yep, Can't yep, do yep. it. Who was that? Saved his life. The, the what was that dude's name? Oh my goodness! What was his I name? want to say Vernon Davis, but Davis. that was not- Vernon Davis. That was Vernon Davis. That's him. That was he's now he's now an actor now. But yes, it was Vernon Davis. He saved Vernon, Vernon Davis' Davis. life. He told Vernon Davis, "You and 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 not only did he tell him to go sit down, he said no, uh, uh-uh. he kicked him off the field. He told him go take a shower, bro. But he yep. saved his life because at that point, leaving Maryland, he was a big big tight end running a four three. You know, he would thought he was God's gift. Yep. He needed that coach." To sit him down and make him know you are human. You know what I'm saying? You need to play this game. We are a unit. 53 men trying to accomplish a specific goal. Right. It's not 52 and Vernon Davis. You know what I'm saying? So if he fixed him, man, he fixed him. And he ended up having a stellar career after that. I think he'll tell you. He's yeah, he spoke on that before. Yep. Yeah. I remember seeing it all. He spoke on that before, man. So uh so yeah, Jay. Yeah, Jay. That that it doesn't have to be. Uh, you don't have to be a Hall of Famer. Doesn't matter. Ooh. You just got to be able to. It, it, you deal with. You deal with personalities. You don't necessarily deal with people. Right, right. And sometimes right. the personalities don't clash. Don't they don't match up? Um, and I and I've said this before. That's that's the beauty of our locker room. Our personalities are balanced quite well. Right, right. You got you you got the business type guys. <laughs> um. Hassan Reddick was somebody like that. James Bradbury was somebody like that. He really yep. don't talk much. Nope. And then on the flip side of that, you got Slay, you got um, BG, and people like that, and CJGJ, um, who who want to do the talking. So you need a little bit of both on both sides of the ball. So absolutely, absolutely. So you got to have a balance of personalities, man. And we got it. And absolute think, love of you know the love of the game. Absolutely, the love man. of you know some people play for the love of the game. Absolutely. Some people love play for the love of the money. Some people play for, you know, the love of, of being able to financially take care of their families. You know, some people play people play for different things, different meanings in their lives. Right. Not everybody plays for the love of football. In fact, there are fewer people that play for the love of football right. than, 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 than you know anything else. You know, most of the time, not nine times out of ten, it's really about the money. About it's the really money. About the money. About the money, the people that play for the love of the game uh, don't mind playing the last year of the contract, or if they do re- do re- renegotiate, they ain't trying to break the bank. Right, right, right. They ain't trying to break the bank. So, right. Reddick, uh, you know, ready to understand? You got a small amount of time to maximize your money making potential. Yep, and I ain't mad at him. For sure, for sure. Not mad at him, man. I, I think he's a victim of timing. Uh, we were talking earlier. I think he's in the same boat that uh Gardner Johnson was when he left. Mm-hmm. He 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 had every right and he earned um uh, the right to say hey I want a better a better contract cuz I yep. played it. Yep. I played past my contract. Yep. And I played this contract. Yep. Yeah, I right. played it. And the, but the problem was the market said whatever CJ Gardner Johnson was asking for, the market said we're not giving you that. Yep. So so the cuz uh we were saying that the Eagles could have gave him 8 million that he played for Detroit, eight million. We could have did that. Yep. Which means he probably asked for like maybe ten to twelve. And Howie was like, "I ain't Easy. going for that." Yep. I ain't going for that. And and uh, Hassan in the same boat. Yep. yep. He outplayed I mean, his contract, but he, Howie ain't gonna come off no twenty two, twenty five million dollars for him. And you on the other side of thirty years old. Yep. So I, I said right there, and it's because Bradbury snake bit him that he's not doing it. Yeah. But if you look at what Howie's doing right now, Howie is addressing needs that we hadn't seen him address before. Like right now, we yes. have we got two slot cornerbacks. 
Yes. DJ GJ and Avante Maddox. He signed yep. Avante Maddox today. Avante so. Maddox, that was a good idea. Yeah. That's a cheap, a cheap veteran body that knows how to play and is comfortable in Philly. So yep. absolutely that was a good the only thing is you got to stay healthy, but it's always been like that. That ain't gonna never change. Yep. What have you done for me lately? Exactly. That ain't gonna never change. So I'm good with that. Because technically, we were all so gaga about C.J. Gardner Johnson coming back. He in the same boat. He got to stay healthy. I want to ask this: What is he going to play? Uh, I don't because I I don't see him as being a deep. I don't see him as being. What is C.J. G.J. going to be in his offense? He's going to be Avante Maddox. What Avante Maddox is in his in his, in his defense. So the only other he, thing, only other thing I could think of, is if they put him back deep until Sidney Brown. Is ready, and then maybe they'll move him. Well, Sidney Brown is a um, he's a box safety. Sidney Brown, and we all know that we got to keep um, you can't have blanket chip up. He's got to be somebody that's got to play deep because he can watch the game develop in front of him because right. he, he lacks speed. Right. If he if he had any type of speed, he'd be a he'd have been a, be a, a second <laughs> or third round draft choice. Absolutely, you know, he lacks speed, you know, and speed kills. But he's so smart, you know, and and I'm, I'm gonna tell you this. I, I equate him a lot to Michael Zordas. And no, yes. it's not because he's white. But yes. he's people, Michael Zordas, one of the smartest players I've ever seen in my life. You know, Michael Zordas didn't guy. say crap in practice, man. I, not I played a with Zordas word. That year. He wouldn't say nothing. Not a word. And, I played and, with Zordas and Rich Miano. I played with Zordas. My, my Zordas and Jefferson were my yeah. safeties when I played. And Mike, he Mike couldn't didn't say nothing. I could, I could, if we ran a forty-yard dash, I could give Mike about five feet in front of me, and I could still outrun him. Back in my yeah. younger days, he yeah. was slow as pond water. But I he tell was. you what, you could not, you could not watch film and see him take a wrong step. He knew where he was he supposed knew exactly to be. Exactly where he was supposed to be. He never had a false step. He was always where he was supposed to be. If he was supposed to be deep, he was going to get there deep. Even if the, even if the play was going, he would, he'd probably start early to get there. But he'd damn sure yeah. get there. And that's the type of player he was. So, you know, he's – and Blake Ships, he's one of those guys. Very, very smart guy, very Eddie calculated. Guy. You know, yeah. when we did try to put him on a fast guy, you saw what happened. Ran yep. right by him. Right. And he, and, right by him. And I remember that game, He for whatever reason, man, he was taking some hellacious angles. I was Ooh, like, dude, what are you I think, doing? I think it was Arizona again. I think it was Arizona yeah. again, yeah. Yeah. So like, what you are know, you doing, dude? Right, right. So I'm, I'm looking at the defense. How is the how secondary going to struck? Of course, we got Slay here. And then on the other side, doom, 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 Keely Ringo, not Brad. Mm -mm. Isaiah Keely Rogers. Ringo. Isaiah Rogers, you think? Oh, I don't know, because Keely Ringo run a 4-3, and he looked good last year. He showed the ability to come he up. Did. And run, he did. You know, he, he looked he, a lot better in the end. Yeah, He looked yeah, a lot better yeah. at the end of the year. I agree. Yes, you, are, you are correct. You are correct. So, so imagine, I don't... imagine I'm getting coaching, because that's one thing that I learned about Big Fangio, he's a teacher. Yeah, he makes you learn why you're doing what you're doing, and once you know why, it's easier for you to play. It's easier for you to then, all right, if you want to disguise something, you can do it because you know why you're doing it. Right. These players will know the defense inside and out. So when you already know to play, now you can play the game uh, confidently, and now you're playing faster, and right, they'll play right. faster not because they're faster players. Because they know what the hell they're doing. They know yep. what they're doing there. Yep, yep, yep. Somebody had a question. I just took it down. I'm gonna get back up real quick. Hold on. Uh say hello, Bear Brooks. If you get the chance to speak with Howie Roseman <laughs> before the draft, please let him know that he must avoid Wiggins at 22 and draft uh, Edgar Cooper or Peyton Wilson. Yeah. Edgar Cooper he, love linebacker, but not gonna do it. Peyton, no. you know, Peyton Wilson, he was all ACC, he was defensive player of the year in the ACC. Peyton Baller, Wilson. I like Peyton Wilson. I Edge Cooper or Peyton Wilson, either or because yeah. they're both the same size. Um, Peyton Wilson is a little bit faster. Uh, mm -hmm. Wiggins is too lightweight, he ain't bringing he ain't bringing enough behind. He's fast, okay. he's fast, he's very fast. You know, Wiggins can, is fast, he's, he's he can't play physical in the NFL, he can't. can't He'll be making him. business decisions all year, right? 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 <laughs> and plus, we got too many. You got you got Rodgers, you got you got uh, um, uh, we got Ricks. Ringo, Bradbury, mm -hmm. Slay, Maddox, CJ, GJ, uh, 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 Josh, Job, 
I mean, we got a lot of corners right now. So how he has done that to kind of put that facade over us, you know what I'm saying? Wave over here. That way right. he fixes all his alignment over here. We're not going to say anything. Oh, we've got all these cornerbacks over here. So don't mind me over here while I pick this lineman up over here. That's what's going to happen. Right. So, yes, I mean, we know Howie. Howie has done it every single year. He loves to build in the trenches. And the success that this team has had, I can't Off be mad at him. I can't. can't be mad at him. Can't be mad at him. So he'll probably, he'll probably pick a tackle at 22. Right. Right, right, right. And it'll be a luxury pick, but he'll yep. they'll spin it off as his best available. And you just can't be mad. You can't be mad at the fact that, you know, they've had so much success. I mean, look at Joel Amala. He signed a three-year, $66 million contract. Man, mom, I'm it. still mad at you, Mom. Why did you have me in that <laughs> early? You, know? you should have put me back in and just sit there and then let me marinate a little bit, you know, overcook me, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Because – they just handing money out to guys. Bro. Bruh, I was, Handy I was, guys. I was talking with my wife because I was undrafted free agent. And in '93, my rookie year, league minimum was a hundred. And she was like, "Well, what is it now?" And league minimum now is seven eighty five. Wow, seven eighty five. Oh my Bruh, god! I was the fifty eighth pick. In the second round, and my contract was what was it? Um, one point, like one point three million dollars, something like that. You know what I'm saying? My entire contract, yeah. and I got, I got a four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars signing bonus. Yeah, this is how naive I was because I had never seen anything like this. I got my check for four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, and when I got my check. It said like $278,000 on it. So I looked in front of my chair. I'm like, whoa. 200. I, thought I, got some. I, I, I literally looked on the back of the check to see if there was more numbers on the back. You know what I'm saying? I did not know about FICA. I did not know about taxes from Uncle Sam. You know, so I was ignorant to all this stuff. I never got it. Bro, I never really worked. I had one job. So yeah. I had two jobs my entire life before I got drafted. I worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken for a week and a half. <laughs> I say I ain't beat for this. I ain't going this. And then I worked on a farm when I was 12 years old. And I worked for two weeks. And I had to get permission from my mom to work there. But I was like, you know what? I'm out there working. You know, I'm picking tomatoes and strawberries. Yeah. And I had working with this guy. This guy gets too mad. He gets mad. And they sent him home. He said, oh, you're going to send me home? You're going to fire me and send me home? He literally went got some gasoline and they had wild cats, you know, living in the house, you know, they fed all the cats. He set one of the cats on fire, bro. No. He put gasoline on, set the cat on fire and the fire ran through the field. Through the field? Oh. He passed away. No. Yeah, man. I was like, you know what? I never came back after that, man. Did I they couldn't believe that, that dude. Movie? Bro, I, I I wanted to beat that dude's ass, you know what I'm saying? I wanted, to, but he got away too fast. Like, yeah. what are you doing? You know, I was only 12 years old, too. It was right. a grown man. He was like right. maybe 30 something years old. That but I, I can't movie. believe he did that to a cat, man. You can't, that happened, you can't do that to animals, bro. That, that happened in a movie, dude. I know where they they did they, they didn't light the cat on fire. They tied like a cat tail or something to the cat's tail, lit that on fire, and sent him through a field to create like a diversion or something like that. Bro, it's, it was the worst sound I ever heard in my life, man. Ugh. The worst sound Ugh. I ever heard in my life, bro. That's I couldn't crazy, believe man. it, man. I could not believe it, man. How man, could you do that to an animal? The the I remember the first check I got. I rode to Mellon Bank with <laughs> with Randall. Rode rode with Randall, and I'm in line at the teller, and I got my little, you know, four thousand dollars or whatever it was, and I'm, I mean, I ain't never seen that much money right. for me. You know never. what I'm saying? I'm looking at Randall, so he's a he goes to the teller before me, and the lady looks at his check, and she like looks down. Then looks up, then looks down, then looks up. I think Randall's check was like 76 grand. He was making like 76 grand a week or something like that. I was like, oh my goodness, man. Right, right, right. But even but but to what you and you somebody like RC or any of those QBs back in the day, big Ben, any of them, and then you got somebody like um like Kirk Cousins with a 150 million dollar contract, man. Got him, got him. He got him, man. He gonna have to make a too. Yeah, 
He gonna have to write like, a book, man. He was like one of the first guys I've seen sign a. Well, I think it was eighty-eight million dollars, and it was all guaranteed. He started guaranteed. that guaranteed money trend. You know what I'm saying? And he only He's has one, one, one playoff game. One. Wow. It's crazy. Like, it's what crazy. is he? He, he must study uh, hypnotism or something. Right. He's he got the something right. He got the yeah. force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will make my contract guaranteed. I want 150 so I can ride off into the sunset. For you real. Know what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. J- James RC was that. Um, technically, there would probably be, honestly, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't compare Randall to Hurts. There's mm. other quarterbacks that I would compare Jalen with, but not RC because RC. I'm trying to think who else would be uh, RC would be compared an RC S type of player. I think RG three his yeah. first year was yeah. like he was the. But you know, I I played with Randall. I just played with Randall one year. Yeah, and at that point, he just didn't get along with with you know. Nah. Our offensive coordinator, you know him and him and him and Chucky didn't like each other at all. You know what I mean? Nah, they and he just, was, they, they couldn't stand each other. But so here's the thing with RC. You saw what RC was capable of when he went to Minnesota. Right, right, right. When he went to Minnesota, and he was back with Chris Carter. That was Randy Moss's rookie year. Uh, they were supposed to go to the Super Bowl if they that damn kicker had to miss. You know what I mean? So. Um, when you like, I tell anybody like Kotite wasn't a bad coach, but Kotite, very similar to Sirianni, you need a good staff around you, right? Right, 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 right. Uh, and in 93 and 94, we ain't necessarily had that. You had Bud, Bud Carson was, you know, that was still the last piece of that gang green defense with Seth and Clyde and Byron Evans and. Willie T and, and West Hop and EA and all of them. So you had you still had the defense intact. Yep. But and they, the offense, they didn't listen to Kotite at all. Mm-mm. I heard, I heard, you know, it's they say he'd be talking, it'd be like they was they was watching uh was a Snoopy in them, you know, or, or Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steph said you should tell him, man, go ahead, man. We we ain't worried about what you do. Go man, back on the side of the room. <laughs> listen, man, I, I always tell that story. I we had we had major injuries that year. Seth got dinged up. Kenny Rose was our special teams captain. He broke his ankle. Um, Randall had torn his knee against the Jets. That's when Eric Allen had that crazy touchdown, that interception for the touchdown. But I remember walking, walking in Kotite's office. I was nervous as hell. I walked into Kotai's office and I was like, Coach, why we have starters on special teams? And you got me at the time, I was one of them dudes. They were traveling me to all the games and they would make me inactive. Wow. And they and they would keep uh Heath Sherman was still on the team. Mm-hmm. Heath Sherman, he was he was nicked up, but he was under contract. Right. So right. so they so he was the it was James Joseph, Herschel Walker. And Heath Sherman. If Heath would have been healthy, it'd have been Herschel and Heath. But they would bring me to all the games. I would go out there, warm up, and they would tell me to go put my clothes on. <laughs> Every game they traveled me to, they would do. And finally, I was like, Coach, I was like, let me go down there, run down on kickoff coverage, and make a tackle. Let me do something. You got Seth on kickoff coverage, and like we had starters on special teams. I was like, Coach, let me do something. And he he went to this rant about. You know, you were young, you're good, rookie. We like you. Just keep doing what you're doing. I was like, but you ain't answering my question. Right. And this ain't helping. You know what I mean? So to, to the point about Kotite, he, was, he wasn't a bad coach, but he didn't have good coaches around him, and it made it look that much worse. I heard. I mean, Seth talks about him like he's <laughs> – Seth be killing him. Killing yeah, him. He, was, he was too busy trying to, you know um, – Put that New York into everything, man. He was he was a true New Yorker, but <laughs> but yeah, the X's and O's didn't match up too much. Hey, South Jersey, there's no way we can pick up a Josh Allen. We can't afford him. Yeah, yeah we can't afford. Him. I wish, I wish, but no, nah, they wouldn't. They wouldn't sign him. I mean, they'd have to. They'd have to 
renegotiate like three or four other contracts for us to get that type of money because Josh Allen wants big, big money. He's gonna get it too. Yeah, he wants big, big money. You know, but I mean, when you look at uh, when you look at Hassan, I mean, I'm I'm anxious to see what Hassan's deal is gonna look like. I, we were talking about that. What are the Jets gonna do? They gotta restructure and resign them, or it doesn't well, make sense. Right, it just doesn't make sense. You know, doesn't you, make you, sense. So, I'm anxious to see what it is. Yeah, because he he outplayed it. He earned it. But what what do you think about Huff? How you like Huff? Because uh, you know the big thing is he only played well, like what four to sixty snaps. Yeah, he only paid was like thirty six percent of the snaps, and since they paid him the way they paid him. Um, three years or three years, 51 million. Yeah, because of that, he's gonna play every down. Now, I hope yes. it equates it to him having more sacks, more you know, his ability. You know, will he be able to stop the run? We'll see that. I think more snaps and playing more is gonna lead to more defensive output, you know, more tackles, right. you know, hopefully more sacks. But you know, we'll see. You know, he's gonna be asked to do a lot, you know, and Vic Fangio wanted him so. I'm glad that Vic has the power to, you know, talk to Howie and they and they and and, and talk to Nick and, you know, get what the players that he wants here. I heard the bombs the same thing. Yeah. He wanted him. He ended up being a day one guy get signed. This is a special yeah. teams guy that got in a couple times on defense, and he's now the type of player that's going to fit the system that Vic Fangio is doing. We'll see. You know, I mean, he can play stand up linebacker. He can play, you know, back there in yeah. depth. Hand on the ground, or, too. Yep, or he can come off the corner. So we'll see. You know, I'm anxious to see how this thing is going to shake up because I don't know necessarily how uh, Sweat, what type of player they're going to put. So is Sweat going to be uh, an end, head up on the tackle? Because they're, they're going to run a 3-4. They're not going to run a 4-3 right. like they were. They're going to run a 3-4. So is he going to be one of those guys going to be head up on the, uh, on the, on the tackle? Or is he going to be an outside linebacker? I don't know if he necessarily fits that outside linebacker type of play. I wonder yeah. if they're going to uh, – because you know the, the NFL is a copycat league. And seeing what Miles Garrett and, and Micah Parsons were doing last year, just jumping around on the line of scrimmage. Now, Huff and Nolan Smith both had that type of speed. Yes. Now I'd be curious if if we could if Fangio would would let something like that happen, just to confuse the the offensive line um, and catch him, you know, calling the wrong signals and just just creating confusion on the line of scrimmage, because Miles Garrett he had them jokers confused when he was doing all of that jumping around and they couldn't stop him because they didn't know right. what he was going to do. Right, 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 but. Miles Garrett is a different type of guy, bro. He's yeah, he's a different beast, man. He's a different bro, beast. I, 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 man, looking at him, I'm like, yo. I, I, I've, I've seen players like that. Like, Bruce Smith was like that. You know, the guy that's yeah. just, you know, ripped up, cut up, and moved fluently. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he he walked bad now, but he wasn't walking like that when he was playing. He, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he he walked like he tiptoeing now. But before, right. he was, man, he was a monster, man. Oh, you know who else beast. was like that? Who was built like, built like Tarzan, played like Jane, <laughs> Alonzo Spellman. Alonzo Spellman, yep. <laughs> man, that joker there, bro. I'm looking at oh him like, God. man, I got my, I got to put my lunch pail on the day. I'm going out. I got to, I got to fight today, man. I go out there, I smack him a couple of times, man. He, he shriveled up like a, like a, like a leaf. He ain't had dude, nothing. Who was the dude that we drafted? He Some was tall, the- drink, tall, drink. Tall he, Virginia. That's uh that's John. John um Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, you're talking about from Tennessee. Oh, you talking about Anton Davis? Anton Davis. Oh, uh, I played with Anton. Played that's with him the, two years. That's the one they used to say, they used to say uh lift like Tarzan, play like Jane. Bro, Anton. <laughs> he just didn't have no dog in him at all. Uh, I, I told Anton <laughs> one time we are we're in the game and we're playing against we're playing against I think it's Minnesota. And uh at that point, Chris Domo was giving him the business. <laughs> the business. Now, all week, I'm getting ready for, for you know, to play against uh to play against Chris Doma because Chris Doma's always played against the left tackle. So right. I'm like, shoot, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to roll. Let's go. Let's go. I'm I'm I didn't prepare myself. 
I know his moves. I'd watch hella <laughs> film. I'm ready. I'm ready to play against Chris Dome. We get out there the first half. He switched bro, up. Chris Chris Dome was on the right side <laughs> playing against Anton. Was giving him his lunch. I remember walking out on the field, and I didn't know Ray Rose behind me. But I'm walking out on the field next to Anton. Anton, hey man, let's switch sides. I'm like, what? What? Did, bro, <laughs> he said he said oh, I, you've I've already prepared. You know, you you prepared for Chris Dome. Well, he's on the right side. Come on, the right side. I'm like, no, man. I I, I play left tackle. What are you talking about? Come on. <laughs> So the first play we get to the line of scrimmage, he said, come on. I said, all right. So I switch I go to right tackle. And he goes to left tackle. All of a sudden, we get to the line of scrimmage. And first of all, Randall gets down and says, down. He looks over and sees that we switch. <laughs> Set, but also, guess who else noticed we switched? Chris Dolman. Right. So he tells uh, Stalin Colinette, no, no, hey, switch sides. So they switch sides. They switch sides. As soon as they hacked the ball, he came over. He came across the line, beat Anton, hit uh, Randall Cunningham. Ball came out. I actually caught the ball and fell on my butt. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, I'm not going anywhere. And I, I, I laid down. But, yeah, I man, he beat him so quick that, you know, Randall couldn't even get out of stands, man. Oh, damn. It was crazy. That's crazy. Who else? What was? I can't remember what his name was. We used to call him Pinky. I think he was our guard. Pinky? No, that's not a good name to be his right guard, bro. He had like he had alligator arms. I just remember oh, okay, he, had, okay. he had short arms, and they used to call him Pinky. I can't remember what his name was though. I have to look up that look up the thing. Um, man, short arms. Um, yeah. Panos, Joe Panos. It wasn't Joe, but it was a black dude. Okay, uh, it's black dude. But I can't remember what his name was. I have to look at. Good. I have to check the rosters from the ninety three. Oh, okay, 90, no, I didn't play with it. I, it was yeah. um like. Barnett was on that team. Freddie B, Calvin Williams, Calvin Randall. Williams, I played with him, Randall. Herschel, uh, Jake, James Joseph. I think James Joseph was gone. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't with Herschel or James Jones. Yeah, you played with Charlie Garner, didn't you? Chuck, Chuck. Chuck yep. was my guy, bro. Uh, was Charlie, my guy. Charlie Garner got me cut. So. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> bro, yeah, he, he got he, me in so much trouble, man. He got oh, me in so Charlie much Garner. trouble. Man. Was Tim Harris still there? Tim was still there. No, 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 no. Tim wasn't there. I played against Tim Harris. Man, He's on Tim Harris, the defensive end from the... from San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't there. T- he wasn't there. Tim Harris was before we had uh like drug and alcohol policy, man. Right. <laughs> Tim Harris used to sweat alcohol in practice, and it's like, dude, <laughs> what are you doing, man? We went. Uh, Kotai took us up to New York. We we stayed up to New York a couple days, and we scrimmaged the Jets. Mm-hmm. I come down for breakfast. This is. Game day. I think it was a night game, so we had the whole day. I come down in 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 the lobby. I see Tim Harris in the bar because you know he used to drink every damn day. It's like ten o'clock in the morning. He's in the bar, what? sitting down with a couple drinks. Wow. He is talking to this dude, and I just come over there. Hey, what's going on, Tim? Hey, Rook, what's going? On? Come on, sit down. This is like something out of a movie, right? <laughs> we in this New York hotel in a bar. He is talking to this man. At 10 o'clock in the morning, he had already been drinking. This dude has a suitcase full of fake Rolexes. What? I kid you not. It looked like, you know how you see in the movies where the dude come up to you and it's like, hey, man, I got what you want. Right, you right. Y'all like the freight, like coming right. to America where the dude was open his. <laughs> he had a suitcase full of fake Rolexes. And I was like, oh, man. I was like, I don't believe what I'm, I'm watching. And Tim bought one. He ended up buying like two of them. Gave the dude wow. like three, four hundred dollars, man. I was cracking up. I was like, this dude is off the chain, man. <laughs> well, I, mean, I played with, I played with a guy like that, but um, Richard Dent. Yeah, Dent was saying it like Dent never, did, he never went anywhere without three thousand dollars on his person. <laughs> Only place he didn't go without three thousand dollars on his person when he took a shower. On practice field, he kept three thousand dollars in his jock. On the plane, he kept three thousand dollars. He's I'm like, well, why do you do that? He said, Man, I grew up very, very poor, and I promised myself I would never ever be Damn. anywhere without three thousand dollars. And he lived by that, bro. Lived Damn. by it. Sitting in meetings, three thousand dollars in his pocket. You know what I'm saying? That's like crazy. he was he was he was a firm believer in making sure that he funded college educations. Uh, strip clubs. He definitely funded a whole <laughs> lot of college education. 
a whole lot of them. Bro. Oh my god, man! Oh but I mean, god. football is different there because we didn't we didn't have cell phones and you nah. know all that social media stuff. You know, it it it, it was a lot did. that was done. People lot, still did the stupid stuff, man. I'm so I'm right. so glad I I ain't get caught up into that, man. I remember going to uh uh we went to I went to Delilah's down on Delaware Ave, <laughs> and it was me. Uh, did you play with Derek Oden? Yep. Mm-hmm. It was me, Derek Oden, linebacker. Yeah, he was he was on that um he was on that Alabama championship team. He was the captain mm-hmm. of the defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. It was about five of us that went there, man. And like no, normally, like strip clubs wasn't wasn't my thing, mm-hmm. right? But we go in there. Soon as we walk in the place, you hear like two, three girls at the same time. Derek, they come over there <laughs> hugging, kissing. I see him pull out his credit card, and I see a girl walk up with her tray. He put it right on the tray, and she turned right back around, and they got us like a little place over. To the left, little private setting, and I was like, "Dude, did you just give me your credit card?" I was like, "You must be crazy, right? You ain't never lied." Nah, cause I, I after that, I was like, "I ain't never." And great, we had a good time, stayed for a little bit, had some drinks and fries and wings and all that kind of stuff. And we got up there. I was, I was like, "Dude, I don't understand that at all." I was like, "Cause you don't know what they charging on your side." I was like, "I could never do that, man." But you, but to your point, you had guys like that that just wanted to bro, be that, out there and, and <laughs> playing a role. <laughs> bro, I, it, it was it was me, Charlie Garner, me, Charlie Garner. Who else was it? Chris T. Jones, Fred McCrary, Chris T. Jones, and Ricky Waters, and we jumped in. Ricky Waters oh. had suburban. Slick Rick had the suburban. He had done up. First of all, it was the ugliest shade of purple I've ever seen in my life. The ugliest <laughs> shade of purple. And he had some, his rims were like, at the time, they were rims like off-road rims when off-road rims weren't cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. It, it, right. Long story long, it, it just wasn't on the East Coast yet. <laughs> right, 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 right. Now, you know, it was sitting on 17, but it had the, you know, that you can go out and mudding type of rims on it. I mean, tires. Right. So. <laughs> we go to the we go to the, you know the the gentleman's you know we get there he parks it right up underneath the only light at the, at the strip club he parks right underneath the light so nobody will steal it we go in and about an hour and a half two hours later we walk we're walking out and we're going out and say hey slip where's the suburban at no oh, no bruh they stole his suburban Got from it. underneath the light. From underneath the light. From underneath the light. They stole his suburban, bro. They know who you Had are. Had to catch man. a cab home. <laughs> Had to catch a cab, man. Catch you couldn't even home, call man. Uber back then, man. No, no. It was. It you was couldn't crazy. even call Uber, man. That's a shame. Yeah, it used to be bad stealing back in the you know cars back in the day, man. Was was bad, man. Bad. I remember my truck. I had a um. I had a uh, Chevy Blazer, man. Nice Chevy Blazer, you know, real nice. It was actually an S10 Blazer. It was a small Blazer. Mm-hmm. It was clean too, you know. Sitting on, you know, sitting on 17s back then. 17s were the biggest you get. Sitting right. on 17, had a brush guard on, was white with the chrome rims on it, with the chrome brush guard. Had a system in it. I mean, that was a nice, nice truck. So uh, I, I, I get to, I get to the vet, and uh, it's, it's, it's during the summer. I mean, it's during summertime, so we're not even. It's not even football time, you know. It's it's like in May, and right. we're doing we're doing OTAs. So when I pull in, you know, you can pull in on this side of the lot. You can put on that side of the lot at the vet. Right. And then you walk underneath the on the, on the overpass that yep. place, and then you walk down the thing. But it was an old man. There was a security guard there. The old man probably was eighty years old, and I never said anything to him. He never said anything to me. I just did like this. He did like that to me. <laughs> now I let you in. <laughs> yeah, so I park my truck on this side. I go in, we go do all the workout downstairs, and you go out on the field, run a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Boom, my day is over with. I'm done by two o'clock in the afternoon. So I come back up, you know, go down, take my shower, come back up to get in my truck. So I walk to the place so I, I know I put my truck. I said, My truck's not there. 
But I noticed on my way up the stairs and I got to the security guard, I said, you should have paid your bill. I looked at him like, <laughs> what? And it was like four of us. It was four of us. It was, it was, it was William Fuller, he was there. Yeah, uh, Fuller was I, I played with yeah. Fuller. Willie T was there. T, T Dog. And um it was a couple of the guys, you know. So he said it to us, and I'm I'm looking at it like, I don't know what he's talking about, you know. And everybody else looked at him like this crazy old man or something like that, you know. So I go on that side. Oh, my truck's not here. Oh, maybe I did park on the other side. So I walked to the other side. My truck's not over there either. I'm like, yo, so I, you know, come back to the security. Hey man. My truck is not there. He said, as I told you, you should have paid your bill. You, <laughs> it was you, Fuller, you should have paid your bill. I think I stole Willie T's car too. Ask him about it. The four of you guys should have should have paid your bill. I said, what are you talking about? He said, three AAA trucks came in that were powder blue. With a, the, the circle was a yellow circle with AAA, three A's on it. Uh-huh. And three tow trucks. Those are three tow trucks. Came with the, you know, the and came and took three of the trucks and another car, you know, drove off with it. Yeah, bro. Team yeah. got you like that. Yeah, while we were at practice. Ah, that's that's scandalous right there, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's scandalous. I remember when uh you remember you had that whole with nobody there, the whole parking lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vi had just got a viper mm. when the vipers that just came out he was driving a viper mm. and uh he got with somebody else they raced in the parking lot oh they raced in the parking lot and it was vi and I, I forget who he rate who he was racing against but it was funny because you know vi was the joker so he in the car with his football helmet on <laughs> right Man, Vi took off. He punched this Viper. That Joker took off. And you know, the, the parking lot back then, it was real uneven. Mm -hmm. And he going up and man, he caught a little air coming off one of them little humps. And this car started fishtailing a little bit. Oh no. We we thought he was gonna lose it, but he was like he was good. But he ended up telling us later he was like scared the hell out of him. <laughs> scared the hell out of him, man. That's why. I had my little uh, Ford Explorer, Eddie Bauer edition. I was good. <laughs> Bro. I, I couldn't stunt too much. Another thing they did, um, back when we had camp, we had um, we had like our OTAs and stuff like that. They put us up in the Holiday Inn right there where, you know, live casino is right now. They put I remember us in that. the Holiday Inn. So they were up in the Holiday Inn. And all of a sudden we hear uh, at night about, 10 or 15 motorcycles in the parking lot. You hear glass ring, clean, 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 clean. We all go outside. They came in, hit the glass, broke the glass, and went in our um our uh, glove boxes, took out the registration cards oh. and left out. Just grabbed the registration cards and left out, you know what I'm saying? Speed it out. Zoom, 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 zoom. Like 15, you know, 10, 15 motorcycles. Damn. About a month later, all the guys that had the, you know, their um windows broken, uh -huh. all of them got their cars stolen from their houses. Wow. They, yeah, they took, you know, all the ones that, you know, had, you know, residences here in Philadelphia. Like the yep. people that had them back in, you know what I'm saying, like they in Alabama or you know, yeah. Missouri, or like me. You know, they didn't because they didn't have the address on it. But the cars that lived in Philly that had the Philly registration and the Philly houses, all of their cars got stolen from. It was the long con. Oh man. Yeah, it was crazy, bro. It, it was crazy back in the back in the nineties, man. Yep, yep, yep. It was it was it was crazy as um I, you yeah, know, you can't get away with that these days. But <laughs> But hey, I uh, will say, you know, before we end all, all this stuff, I'm going to say this. I think the Eagles have the most talented offense, player for player, in the nope. NFL. No question. The most talented, even better than the 49ers. Yes, I agree. Even better, even now, because, I mean, you look at what's going down in Houston. They they building something down in Houston, too. Man. They build some down in Houston too. I so. see what they're doing, and, mm -hmm. and they going all in for because Stefan only going to be there for a year. Yep, 
Because yep. he on the wrong side of 30, so he's not gonna get no big payday. Nope. So uh he he trying to take it to the house. He got sick of sick of uh Josh Allen and his antics. So right, exactly. But yeah, I, I I'm with you 100 percent man. I, th- I think our defense is good. I think our offense, um if you look at 2022 and what Kellen Moore did with Dallas that year. His, I wrote this down a couple of days ago. Let me find this. His run pass ratio was was crazy balanced. Dang it, I can't find. It. I got all these March Madness notes. I oh, James, what? James Monsanto say Brandon Ayuk. He he said he was going somewhere. He went to the Steelers. What are the Steelers doing? What the Steelers are making some moves also? They they making some moves, but it all depends on what Russ gonna do. But mm. I do like I do like Russ and Justin Fields with Mike Tomlin. I do like yes, that. Me too. Um, me too. Oh, in 2022, um, Kellen Moore with Dallas, 563 passes, 510 rushes for That's the year. To my ear. That's music to my ear. You can't get much balance than that. No, absolutely. And now that was the year that um, I think that got hurt. That was the the, the Cooper Rush, the five games that yeah. uh, that got hurt. So to have that type of balance for the year, and to see what Zeke did, and and I'm like, if we can get that type of balance here, and the most important thing is, it, it I am hoping that he is going to use the running back like he's supposed to be used. Will we pay That's Saquon? He's definitely gonna be used, bro. He gonna he gonna be used, man. But we've been saying that for the last two years, so you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ho- yeah. Hopefully, common sense will prevail, man. But um, I-, I think we're I think Kellen Moore is gonna be better than advertised, and he's gonna pay dividends. And I yep. think, you know, um, with Devin White and Saquon Barkley, there is no better motivation than to be a player with a chip on your shoulder trying mm. to prove somebody else wrong. Absolutely. So. Devin White, they were saying that they don't know what happened to him, but he's not as good as he was. And the whole situation with Saquon and New York, um, that just puts us on another. I didn't even think we could have, like, all of the web to your point, man, all of the weapons we have on offense is just stupid. Crazy, right? Stupid. That's an unfair Madden game. That's what that is, man. (laughs) That's crazy, though. And, And somebody gave me flack for saying this. I was like, the Eagles are trying to use Saquon Barkley like San Fran did with CMC when he came from Carolina. Very Absolutely. similar situations. Absolutely. Absolutely. They both came off of, and um, um, Christian McCaffrey had hurt his ankle like two years in a row. And then he had finally had a year where he was healthy. And then uh, Carolina offloaded him. And San Francisco took the chance. And you see what you, you get, what you get. Match made now. Yep, and I think uh, Saquon's going to be in the same way. And I know that Kellen Moore knows how to run a freaking uh, play-action pass. Right, under center. Under center. Thank you. They Because Dallas used to kill us with that. Mm-hmm. They used to kill us with that. So I'm just hoping that, that Kellen Moore will take the common sense. We will uh, have different formations. We you, We will use motion. We will have some damn hot routes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um just the common sense stuff, man. And for whatever reason, like that we just didn't do, man. I didn't I didn't that's my only big criticism with Sirianni as much as I like him. Like, dude, how did you let that stuff go? You know what I mean? And you were offensive minded coach and you saw what you saw, and you didn't step up and say, No, we are not gonna do that, or we are we need to add, like do something, man, because it was it was too obvious and it, right. it wasn't complicated. We had talked about that before. The problems that we had were not complicated at all. And, 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 and easy fix. Yeah. Easy fix. We just couldn't sure. fix it. Uh, do we think the Eagles will sign Justin Simmons? Uh, I, hope so. I don't. I hope so, too. I don't think they will. I don't think so now. Now that you've um, went and got CJ's DJ, yeah. I don't think that they do. Yeah, I think that ship sailed. Yep, yep. So Because we wasn't, we wasn't expecting CJ DJ at all. So exactly. maybe, um, but, and um, we was talking earlier about Zach Bond. Uh, I think he's going to be what we thought Christian Ellis was last year. Right. 
Right, right, right. So you were full ass, yep. Yeah, just did just didn't work out that way, but I, I think we're in good I think we're in a good spot, man. And once again, you hear all of these uh the media heads, everybody on TV, and when you hear them, you can immediately tell who follows the Eagles and who just you doing your thing on on television. Right. <laughs> because because clearly uh they don't know about Cam Jurgens. Um because everybody's saying, oh, what are the Eagles going to do with Jason Kelsey gone? And I'm like, dude, Cam Jurgens is handpicked, and he should have been starting last year. Yep. He was ready to rock and roll last year. So I have zero problem with Cam Jurgens. Cam Jurgens is going to be just fine. So, um, and, and uh, you know, some way, shape, or form, um, Kelsey going to be on the sideline coaching. Absolutely. He's going to yeah. be the head professor at Stoutland U. <laughs> so you know how that rolls man so but uh i'm gonna let you get out of here man i appreciate you joining me bro thank you man i definitely right. enjoyed myself man and uh next time you uh book me bro make sure nobody's jumping off a bridge man please <laughs> it ain't my fault i ain't had nothing to do with that <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy bro that was crazy. Right. so but all right man we'll do it again so everybody have a great night all right, bro. Talk to you. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you. The great B double in the house, man. That was good. Kind of reminiscent, man. The Randall days and, and the stuff we did at the vet, all that kind of stuff, man. It was crazy back then, man. Oh my God. It was crazy. We had so much fun. Camp up at Westchester, all of that kind of stuff, man. Oh, my core memory from my camp at Westchester was Eric Allen. Um, Eric Allen would bring a giant Tyco racing set. It was about five racing sets in one box. And we would make this huge racing track uh, in one of the dorm rooms, in the little common area dorm room uh, up at Westchester. And we would be up to like three or four in the morning doing that stupid stuff. Wasn't hanging out, wasn't going out to bars. We would be up in that common area at Westchester, one of the dorms at Westchester, with anime on the television, having Tyco race car races. Best. It was the best, dude. It was the best. So, but all right, folks, man. Uh, we had a good night tonight, man. I appreciate Barry coming through, even though uh he got stuck in traffic. Uh, so we're gonna do this again, man. Philly Philly, I appreciate you, Jason Sink, James Monsanto, Anthony Obasi. I appreciate you, bro. First time I've seen you in the chat, but I hope this will not be the last. South Jersey D, Cody K, as usual. Cody K was first out the limo. Um, Jonathan Harvey. Um, also, let me let me let me look that up real quick while we're here. Um, is the IU thing solid? Is that is that for real? Or is like or or, or is it um just um Hearsay or we want. Uh da, 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 da. Giants have interest in running back Trey Benson, Stefan Diggs. I don't see anything. All I see is um Stefan Diggs. So I don't see anything about Ayuk. So maybe it's not happening yet. But but yeah, man. Thanks to all you people. Uh Cody K, Jason Sink, um 88. 88 MC, I appreciate you. And then we got a Facebook user. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what language that is. Um, yeah, I think that got everybody. But yeah, I mean, we had a great show today, man. Jonathan Harvey, I appreciate you. Did I miss anybody? I don't want to miss nobody. Burr, B triple R's, hotter than fish grease. <laughs> Obviously for Barrett, I think he saw that. Because I saw him start laughing. Um, but yeah, man, great show tonight, man. Great conversation with Barrett. I'm gonna have to chop this up and make some some YouTube shorts out of this one, man, because this was a great conversation, man. The chat was on fire, uh, and I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow I'll go at what nine thirty, I think. So it'll be a late show tonight. So that should be fun. Hopefully we can get some of our people on the West Coast, uh, and also uh, the games will be on. So uh, the women's game. So. Join me tomorrow. Uh, make sure you hit that subscription and notification bell before you leave. And as usual, do not forget to invite somebody and bring a friend next time. All right. I'm going to be out of here. I appreciate you guys. Until the next one. Go Birds. <laughs>